I've been married to my husband for four years, and I just found out that my husband is having an affair with my mother. Yay! She went to Ghana with my husband. My husband took my mother on a vacation. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a woman, and she said, I've been married to my husband for four years, and I just found out that my husband is having an affair with my mother. Yay! Enokwa. <laughs> it's a very heartbreaking something. It's been six months since I found out, and I have never told anybody this. But from here, it even gets worse. I know that my husband has been cheating on me, but I never thought it was with my own mother. I mean, the woman that carried me in her stomach for complete nine months is with my husband. I've always suspected my husband of cheating. So one day we were in the bedroom. It was time for us to go to bed. So my husband was pressing his phone. So I was looking at him when he unlocked his phone. So I memorized his password. The next morning, he was getting ready for work and he left his phone on the table in our room. I took the opportunity and I went through his phone. The first place I went to was his WhatsApp and I saw that he archived like three messages. I don't know what took me there, but I opened the archived messages and what I saw shook me. I saw conversations of my husband and my mother. I went to their media and I couldn't believe my eyes. My mother was steadily sending my husband her new pictures and my husband will send his own to her. Jesus Christ. There was a time my husband told me that he had a business trip to go to in Accra, Ghana. Through the messages, I was able to find out that he actually traveled with my mother. Because that same time my husband traveled to Ghana, my mother told me that she was going on a business trip because she sells Ankara and other tailoring materials. She often goes to Lagos to buy them. But I just found out that she never went to Lagos. She went to Ghana with my husband. My husband took my mother on a vacation. But I've been begging my husband to take me on a vacation for the past two years now. My mother used to come to our house sometimes. She would stay like one week or two weeks. So she never came to my house because of me. She always came to my house because of my husband. I can't believe my own mother would do such a thing to me. I am writing this with tears in my eyes because who will I trust in this whole world if I can't trust my own mother? My husband doesn't know that I know about his affair with my mother. My mother doesn't know that I know about her affair with my husband. In fact, nobody knows that except now that I'm saying it to you. I am hurt. I feel betrayed. I feel like I was stabbed in the back by my own mother. I know that men will always be men, but my own mother, how will I explain that? I have two kids for my husband. I was a lawyer before I got married, but I stopped practicing law because motherhood really dealt with me. But now I am really going to deal with my husband because he knows not to mess with me, especially a woman that is a lawyer. I have got enough evidence that I need because when we got married, we signed the infidelity clause. But I'm having double mind. I don't know if I should go ahead with the plan I have or I should just leave him and move on with my life. I am an only child of my mother and my father is late. My mother is the only family I have. I know I have my kids, but she's my mother and I still love her. Even after I found out what she did to me, I don't know if I am scared to cut her off or is it too much love I have for her because she loved me, she took care of me all by herself when my father died. She never wanted to remarry because she doesn't know how the man she is going to get married to will treat me. That has always been her fear. Please, I am confused. What should I do? I was thinking of taking this matter to my kinsmen, but I am scared of how people will see my mother. My mother is a very young woman. She's in her late forties. What if it is my husband that went for my mother? I don't even know what to think anymore. Please, what do you think I should do? Should I leave my husband? Should I confront my mother? 
Each time my mother calls me and I hear her voice, I don't know if it is hate or anger that I feel towards her, but I know that I don't want the world to see my mother as a bad person. So please help me. What should I do? Because I am confused. Please, what do you guys think I should do? Divorce the man. Move on with your life. Get a new life. Like continue practicing your law. You have two kids. You you have you have you have something that can sustain you. If you don't want to confront them, you don't want to confront your husband, you don't want to confront your ma your mother, please move on with your life. Because any man that is capable of cheating on you, not with another woman, but with your own mother, is capable of you. You understand what I mean? So guys, what are your thoughts on this? What do you think this woman should do? And just like I always say, please make the comment section accommodating for everybody because these people are always in the comment section reading comments. Don't forget to share this to at least five of your loved ones or your family members and I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My boyfriend wanted to use me for money rituals, but I used him instead and took all his clients. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a girl and she said, My boyfriend wanted to use me for money rituals, but I used him instead and took all his clients. <laughs> My boyfriend is a Yahoo boy and I am a Yahoo girl too. But he doesn't know that. He knows me as a hair vendor. But me, I be normal street girl. When I met my boyfriend, he was okay. But I was okay more than him. He was always complaining that his luck isn't shining. Like that. And as a good girlfriend, I would tell him to relax that things will get better. One morning, I was shared doing cleanup. And I saw a calabash with my pictures in it. With the date I was supposed to travel to the east to attend my friend's wedding. So I took a picture of it and I sent it to my sister in the village to show my grandpa, who is a native doctor. He told me that he wanted to use me for money rituals and that the date I saw is the date the ritual will take place, that I will have an accident on my way to Anambra and I will die. That's why it's not good to let people know your movement, because that's how they strike. My grandpa did some rituals and it was destroyed. I told my grandpa that I want to use him for money ritual. My grandpa agreed, but he said he would not him. So he diverted all his luck and destiny to me. I went to his laptop, collected all his paying clients, then I crashed his laptop. Just one week of talking to them, they all paid me big money. My boyfriend is now my boy because I broke up with him after things went down with him. And I employed him as my hair brand manager. Because my grandpa said as long as I continue paying and he keeps collecting money and feeding off me, that he will remain my slave and money-making machine for life. So guys, no be every girl we una see, una go fit use. Some of us waiting day our back, pass una ten juju put together. Hmm. Now what? Now what? Now, this one, uh, the girl and uh, the guy come uh, this one uh, back to send that the thing happened so quickly. So quickly. And when I will be men, we will be say, when I no go calm down, may God bless you. Like, why? Why you no go calm down, may God use him own time, bless you. Now, you wanted to use somebody's daughter to for money ritual. You know, no say, I mean, Papa and a native doctor. Now, they have turned and used you for the same thing that you wanted to use her for. And now she now turned you to her boy. And what this thing is... <sighs> this story is, um, is, is... I don't know what it is, but please, what do you guys think? Do you guys think this lady did the right thing by using him after he tried to use her? Anyway, drop your comments and be kind with your comments. Share to at least five of your friends or your loved ones. I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. I've been dating my boyfriend for the past five years now. And in the space of that five years, I've done 10 abortions for him. Kilo, the waiting, they happen. Imagine this man wanted to leave me in his house and go get married to another woman. 
hello sugar plum here again and this is confess with sugar and just like i always do i'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to so this story is from a girl and she said i've been dating my boyfriend for the past five years now and in the space of that five years i've done 10 abortions for him kilo the waiting they happen waiting waiting they happen 10 I have done 10 abortions for him because each time he gets me pregnant, he will tell me that he can't have a baby out of wedlock. So I recently found out that my boyfriend is seeing another person and that he secretly wants to marry this person while I am still living in his house because we live together in Lagos. One day I was just cleaning the house on a fateful Saturday morning and I found an invitation card under our bed. I thought it was an invitation card that was given to my boyfriend but when I looked I saw my boyfriend's name and one girl's name that her name is Chinaza. I didn't say anything to him I just kept quiet. Men are the most wicked creatures on this earth. You know you will not marry me. You know you have no plans of making me your wife but you kept me for five years and I kept on aborting babies for you and now you want to leave me and go and marry somebody else just like that i never confronted him i kept quiet so on the day that he's supposed to go for his wedding imagine this man wanted to leave me in his house and go get married to another woman in fact their wedding is in this same lagos i don't know how he thought i will never find out but this is what i did on the morning of the day he is supposed to go for his wedding i looked beautiful i told him that i wanted to go for a photo shoot because I have a good body and people use me to market their clothes. So I did my makeup and my makeup was on point. In fact, everything was a check. He asked me where I was going to and just like I said, I told him I was going for a photo shoot. I made him breakfast. I made him bread with hot chocolate. But what he didn't know was that I spiked his tea with sleeping pills. So after he finished eating, he told me he wanted to go to somewhere that he has a wedding to attend that one of his friends is doing his wedding today i said okay the sleeping pills i gave him is one of the strongest sleeping pills you will ever get so it knocked him out in less than two minutes and he didn't wake up until 2 a.m the next day when he woke up i was sitting beside him he jumped up from the bed when he woke up after he looked at his phone and saw the time and that's when he told me what did I put in his drink. I told him I don't understand what he is saying. That's why is he asking me what I put in his drink. I forgot to mention that all the times he was sleeping, his phones were ringing up and down. Even to the extent his phone went slow. And I even helped him to plug the phone because I wanted them to keep calling him. So that's how I made him miss his own wedding. I told him that I found out today is his wedding and I purposely spiked his drink so he will miss his wedding. The girl called him and told him never to call her again. His family members told him not to step feet in their house. All the food and drinks that was made, people enjoyed themselves and there was no wedding. He said I am the worst thing to ever happen to him because I made him look like he abandoned his bride on the altar. Do you think I am wicked for doing that? Men. 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 Anyway, guys, over to you people. What are your thoughts? Do you think this girl is wicked for doing what she did? Or do you think she did the right thing? And don't forget to be kind with your comments. Share this video to at least five of your family members or your loved ones. And I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My wife is becoming too ugly for my liking. So after she gave birth to our child, she started eating like a gluten. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. Guys, please pardon my mic. My mic disappointed me, but you know, the show must go on. So this story is from a guy and he said, My wife is becoming too ugly for my liking. How can a woman go from a size 10 to a size 20 in the space of three months just because she gave birth? I love my women a size 10, nothing higher than that, and all my life I've always dated slim women. 
because I want my wife to still remain slim even after giving birth. I mean, look at Adeswa, Banky W's wife. That's how I want my wife to look like after she has given birth to my children. When my wife was pregnant, she didn't have all these crazy pregnancy cravings. In fact, her eating was with a bag because she wasn't eating well for a pregnant woman. But the doctor said it's nothing to be scared of as long as she's eating healthy. In my mind, I was so happy because that will make her not gain weight. So after she gave birth to our child, she started eating like a gluten. My wife will eat like five times a day with big plates and big portions. In fact, one plate of rice that she ate after giving birth is what she will usually eat in three days. But I didn't want to be insensitive, so I didn't complain. But fast forward to three months later, my wife is now looking like a stuffed teddy bear. Ha! Ha! She's so unattractive to me. Like, I can't see myself touching her if she doesn't lose that weight as soon as possible. Even when she removed her clothes in front of me, her tummy is everywhere jiggling. I no longer sleep in our bedroom because I can't stand the sight of her in a nightwear. I always lie to her I want to walk overnight and I don't want to disturb her and our baby. But that is a lie. I think married women should take care of themselves even after childbirth. Because if I start looking outside now, they will say that I am not a good husband. But which husband will want to be in bed with someone as big as an elephant? Don't get me wrong, I love my wife, but something needs to be done. I have told her to cut down on things that she is eating, because she is slowly turning obese. Getting out of bed to even bait our baby is a problem. All thanks to my mother that is here helping out, because if not for her, I don't know how we would have done it. Things are very expensive in the market now. Things that usually last us for at least one month, now only lasts us for two weeks, sometimes a week plus, because she is eating excessively. Please, how do I control her? Because if she continues like this, I will jab her. <sighs> Audience, please, what do you think this guy should do in order to control his wife from eating, from overeating? So please, if you're a, a mother or you've given birth or you're a breastfeeding mother and you have any, any solution on how she can cut down her eating and still feel okay, or how you think or what you think this our brother can do to get his wife in a good shape, please drop it in the comment section. Don't forget to make the comment section accommodating for everyone. Don't forget to share this video to at least five of your friends and I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye! Out of peer pressure, I joined a secret court. I was young when I joined. I was told that I will always meet my wife and get her pregnant. Once the pregnancy is two months, I must abort the child myself as a peace offering to the gods. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a guy or a girl, I'm not sure, but he or she said, Hi Sugar, good evening. My heart is heavy. I'm tired because I have all the riches in the world and I don't have happiness. It's not even about my wife because she's the best thing that has ever happened to me. I love her so very much. I'm the problem here, sugar. Out of peer pressure, I joined a secret court. I was young when I joined. I was told I won't father a child. I was okay with it because I felt I will adopt a child when I'm ready. Later, I got married. That was when I understood the terms given to me. I was told that I will always meet my wife and get her pregnant. Once the pregnancy is two months, I must abort the child myself as a peace offering to the gods. I usually drug my wife anytime she's two months pregnant. I add a drug that will make her miscarry. I've aborted seven pregnancy. I pity my wife. Her body is already weak and I don't want to lose her. Please, what do I do? I'm helpless. I love my wife and I don't want to see her suffer. 
I don't want to lose my wealth too. Please advise me. See, I don't feel if you want to do ritual, do it with yourself. Hmm? Just do it with yourself. Is it that they pluck off your eyes, then cut off your leg, they cut off your kingi, and they cut off anything they want to cut off. But I beg, use your body and do it. Stop doing sacrifice with somebody that is somewhere innocently. Now look at the way you, you they suffer this woman. Seven pregnancies, you're always giving her pills. What what what? What Jesus Christ? And this woman now she'll be traumatized. She'll be going through so much. Like she'll be wondering what is her problem. She will always blame herself that she's the problem. She will even think maybe it's because she's careless. That's why she keeps miscarrying her babies. While you, the husband, is the problem. You don't want to let go of your wealth. You don't want to lose your wife. You can't eat your cake and have it. You have to choose one. If you want them to save you from the secret court so that you can stop sacrificing your born kids, you come out with your full chest and say this is what you want so that they will know how they will help you. So guys, please, though, if you know that you know anybody that know anybody that can help this guy with his ritual problem, please, for the sake of his wife, for the sake of his wife, please come through. If you think you do not want to drop it in the comment section, please send it to my DM directly. I'll be reading my comments and my DMs. So guys, don't forget to share this video to as many as possible. Sharing is free. Just tap on that icon down there and share. Don't forget that I love you guys and I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My in-law said I am wicked because I refuse to give my sick wife one of my kidney. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. This story is from a man and he said, My in-law said I am wicked because I refuse to give my sick wife one of my kidney. So I met my wife on a plane. We were both headed to Dubai. She was so beautiful and she sat right next to me. So I believe it was fate. Everything happened fast. We got married one year later. My wife likes to party. She loves drinking. Her drinking even got worse after we got married. Because trust me, if it was that bad while we were dating, I wouldn't have married her. I always told her to stop drinking too much because of her health but she wouldn't listen to me the only time she didn't drink was when she is pregnant which was a struggle which is the reason why she stopped at two kids because she doesn't want to go through the pain of not drinking for nine months after our second baby was born she became sick when the baby turned three and the doctors told her to stop drinking that her body is weakening by the day because of excessive alcohol she didn't listen she would be sneaking in some bottles and now her kidneys have gone bad i was tested and i was a match but i said i can't give her one of my kidneys because i want to be alive and well to take care of my kids in case anything happens because what if the operation isn't successful and living on one kidney is a lot with everything I've read about it, I explained it to them, but they think I don't love their daughter enough. And they say that I am wicked for not giving her one of my kidneys. Do you think I am wicked or I made the right choice for myself and my children? Because only if she listened to me and stopped drinking excessively, she will not be having any health issues. So do you think I am wicked for refusing to give my wife one of my kidney one thing i'm going to say about this is that be careful how you live your life at your youth be careful how you're living your life right now because sooner or later the result is going to tell on you excessive drinking is bad excessive smoking is bad abusing drugs is bad you might think that you're enjoying it and you are flexing life and you're doing all that but trust me by the time you start hitting 50 60 that is when you will start seeing the choices that you made how it will affect you so the choices you make now decide 
if it's going to be a good choice or if it's going to be a bad one. So make the right choice today so that at the long run, you will have yourself to thank for it. So do you think this man did the right thing? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Do you think he's wicked for refusing to give his sick wife one of his kidneys? Please share this video to at least five of your friends or your loved ones. And I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My fiancé will always send the both of us on an errand so we can bond like father and daughter. Unknown to her, I have feelings for the girl. She cries like a baby, which makes me feel like a man. She's so soft-spoken, I can't get her sound off my head. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a guy, and he said, Hi Sugar, please hide my identity. I fell in love with a single mom. She told me about her 17 years old daughter, but I never met the girl. Four months ago, I proposed to her. She then invited her daughter over to meet me and also help with the wedding plans. When I saw the girl, I won't lie, I was distracted because of her firm and portable backside, unlike her mother's own that is bigger. <laughs> My fiancé will always send the both of us on an errand so we can bond like father and daughter. Unknown to her, I have feelings for the girl. One of those days, I started a conversation with, between Tiwi and I. I saw Tiwi enjoy every bit of it. She was already feeling me before we finished talking because she pretended that, that I should change the topic. I agreed and decided to change the conversation. The day my fiancé sent Tiwi and I to the tailor's shop to fit Tiwi's dress for the wedding, Tiwi started the conversation. This time, she asked me to park at the side of the road. She put my finger in her heart and I felt some liquid. I then suggested we go to a hotel. That was the day she stole my heart. She cries like a baby, which makes me feel like a man. She's so soft-spoken, I can't get her sound off my head. Please, I know I made a mistake, but Tiwi is pregnant and I want to marry her because I no longer love her mom. What do I do? Men. 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 Like, you guys never cease to amaze me. Like, you people do the... Like, the things you people do, when I hear it, I'm like, is this person okay? Somebody trusted you enough to let you bond with her daughter because she knows you are going to be her stepfather soon. Instead of you to be teaching her something reasonable, you are doing another thing to the extent that she's pregnant now and you are talking of dumping her mother for her. Like, anyway, audience, please, what do you think this guy should do? He said he's confused and he needs advice. Please drop your advice or your suggestions in the comment section. And just like I always say, please be careful with your comments and be kind and be nice and be accommodating with your comments because these people are always in the comment section reading comments. So please, let's have a safe community where everybody can feel safe to share their stories because if people are continuously bashing people, they will not have the mind or they will not have the heart to come out and share their stories so guys don't forget to share this video to as many as possible i'll see you guys on my next episode bye i'm pregnant for my sister's father-in-law hey <laughs> sister's husband was so broken i was sad seeing him in that state so i decided to make him feel better we made love in the room where they packed the souvenirs for the burial jesus christ Hey! Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and you know what time it is. So this is Confess with Sugar, and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. This story is from a girl, and she said, I'm pregnant for my sister's father-in-law. Hey! <laughs> After my sister got married, I started with her husband. 
I swear I wanted to stop, but man, he's so good. I love how he handles me. A man that moans is a special man. Whenever we are making he moans. His moans puts me in the mood and makes me rich organ. Fast forward to when my sister's mother-in-law died. We traveled for her burial and my sister's husband was so broken. I was sad seeing him in that state, so I decided to make him feel better. We made love in the room where they packed the souvenirs for the burial. Jesus Christ. Hey! We were on it when his father, that is my sister's father-in-law, walked in on us. We were both shocked because we weren't expecting anyone there at that hour of the night. He saw us both naked as I was bouncing on his son. He couldn't believe his eyes because he knows I'm the daughter in law's sister i was shivering my brother-in-law was confused too papa never said anything until we left three weeks after the burial i received a call from papa that i should come to a bar because we all live in the same town i was surprised because this man just buried his wife how come he's already visiting bars i went there he told me he won't tell my other sister what he saw on a condition that i would him like I, his son he said he can't get the way i bounce out of his head i refused and he dialed my sister's number in my presence i had to give in i have been papa since then and of course i said my brother-in-law but i'm pregnant right now and papa is responsible because he doesn't rest he wants it all the time and i don't know what to do my sister is going to kill me if she finds out I'm pregnant for her father-in-law. Please advise me, sugar. Do I keep the baby or put it? I don't want to play with my future. You already played with your future. You played, you, like, you played with your future. Like, how are you girls this bold? Like, what did they happen? What is going on? Like, don't you guys feel irritated? Like, don't you guys have morals? Mm, even karma, even abomination. When I know they fear all those ones. Ah uh ah. -uh. <laughs> Please, guys. You guys have heard her. What do you think she should do? Should she keep the baby or remove the baby? Or tell her sister that she with her husband and her father-in-law at the same time? Like Jesus Christ, who raised you people? <laughs> hey, egg by me. Anyway, guys, don't forget to share this video to as many as possible. Be kind with your comments, and I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. Period. It's over three years since after my NYSC, and I decided to go meet my girl's parents, only to find out that her mom was my sugar mommy in school. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confessed with Sugar, and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. This story is from a guy, and he said, please help me. I had a sugar mommy when I was in school. She sponsored me all through my university days. We had much fun. Sometimes she invites her friends over, and we will have fun. Most times I didn't want to do it, but she insists and calls me her boy. She says I must do all she wants since she pays my bills. Fast forward to presently, I fell in love with a girl during my NYSC days, and we have been dating since then. It's over three years since after my NYSC, and I decided to go meet my girl's parents, only to find out that her mom was my sugar mommy in school. She insists that I will never marry her daughter, despite the fact that the girl is already pregnant for me. She says she will refer us to a good doctor that will terminate the pregnancy, that someone like me can never marry her daughter. Please, I need advice because I am confused. I don't want to lose my child nor my girlfriend because I love her so much. Please, do I report to the police because I'm confused here? Please put it out there for, you, for your fans to share their opinions. I'll be reading comments. Thanks. Sugar mommy, sugar daddy, sugar mommy, sugar daddy. 
I don't even understand the facts why people are doing sugar mommy and sugar daddy. Because how do you look at somebody that is old enough to be your father and you want to have something with the person? Someone old enough to be your grandfather. Someone old enough to be your grandmother and your mother. And now look at everything that is happening. Because um, if, if, if the woman, Sha, if I'm in her shoes, I would do the same thing. Because why would I want to have a son-in-law that would be with older women while my, married to my daughter? Because there is no guarantee that you're going to stop doing sugar mommy if you get married. So guys, just like he said, he needs your advice. Be kind with your comments. Whatever you think is best for him to do in this situation, please drop it on the comment section. And do not forget to share this video to as many as possible. Please share this video. Share it. Sharing videos are free. Please. Please. And I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. I am 43 years old and I just found out my father is not my father. None of my siblings are a match with my dad. And another shocking part is that we all have different DNA. That means four different fathers. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is for me, man, and he said, I am 43 years old and I just found out my father is not my father. We are four, three boys and one girl. I am the eldest and the four of us live in the USA. Sometimes in November last year, we wanted to have a family reunion and we wanted my dad to come to US because my mom is late. So he came and we did the reunion and everybody was happy. One day, after I gave him food, I took the spoon he used in eating to run a DNA test because I've been seeing so many stories online, so I wanted to be sure. So when the results came out, I saw that he isn't my father and that broke my heart. So I told my siblings about what I just found out and out of curiosity, they decided to do their own after shouting at me for doing the DNA test. And guess what? None of my siblings are a match with my dad. And another shocking part is that we all have different DNA. That means four different fathers. We couldn't believe our ears and eyes. How can my mother do this to our father? How can she do this to us? Who are our fathers? How do we locate them? But unfortunately, our mother isn't here to answer these questions. Now, my siblings and I don't know if we should tell our dad or not because we are scared the heartbreak might affect his health or even give him high BP. As long as I am concerned, no matter what happens, he is still my father till the day God calls him to rest because he is the one who sacrificed everything and trained us all. My siblings are saying we should tell him to remarry so he can have a child from his blood at least. But I don't think it's a good idea. So please, do you think we should tell him the truth or just keep it as a secret forever? This issue of DNA test, this issue of DNA, eh? I think every man should do it just to be sure no matter how you want to say you trust your wife with the rate of everything that is going on please do it and make sure that these kids are your own 43 years old four different fathers jesus christ anyway guys they will be in the comment section what do you think they should do should they tell their father the truth or just keep it as a secret or ask the man to remarry, at least make him be saying him, even bomb picking wave from your own blood come out. Anyway, guys, don't forget to be kind with your comments. I'll see you guys on my next video. Share this video to at least five of your family members, and I'll see you guys. I love you. I never knew people who eat humans exist until I almost became a victim. I took my eye to where the fridge is and I saw a human head in a transparent container with eyes. 
Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a girl, and she said, I never knew people who eat humans exist until I almost became a victim. I am a runs girl, and I make money from men on a daily basis. And I won't lie, the business is booming, because men these days only want to knock and get high. So one fateful evening, after taking my bath and putting on my dress for the night, I took a taxi to my favorite spot, somewhere around GRA Ikeja. I won't lie, market was dry that night, and I was already getting frustrated because I was broke, and that night I needed at least 200k to be okay for like three days. I was about leaving when a G-Wagon stopped in front of me and asked me how much for a night. And I said 500k, because for you to have that kind of car, you must have plenty money. The guy didn't price. He just said, enter, let's go. And I told him to transfer 250k for me first before I enter. Then he can balance up after we are done. And he did that and we left. The drive was far that I was already getting tired of the ride. And I kept asking him, what's up? Why is the place too far like that? He said we are going to his place that it's somewhere at Magodo. In my mind, I was like, ah, that's foul. And he said I shouldn't worry that he will pay for my cab coming back. And I said no problem. 30 minutes later, we got to his house and it was like a castle with two maids and two guards. And that's the only house on that street. At first, I was scared, but I maintained my cool because I know rich people can be weird sometimes. He took me to his room and I took my bath and I was on my towel and I heard a knock on the door. I answered and the maid came in and gave me foods and drink. I didn't see the guy again till it was 11 p.m. when he came in and told me that he wanted to go read some books, that he would join me shortly. In my mind, I was like, sure, this man will not come so we can do what we came here to do. But I just told him, okay, and after eating, I slept off. Then, 2 a.m., I woke up and I checked my time. And he wasn't in the room, so I got up and left the room to go look for him. Immediately, I stepped out. I passed about three rooms, and the fourth one, I was hearing voices, so I peeped. I saw this guy with his two guards in front of a table with knives and a huge meat on the table. In my mind, I was, ah, ah are they having a feast tomorrow? This one, they are prepping meat. So I don't know what took my eye to where the fridge is, and I saw a human head in a transparent container with eyes. Ha! I almost screamed, but thank God I didn't. And that was when it dawned on me that the meat on the table is actually a human being. He told the guys that if they are done with this one, that they should go get me. And I was like, so this is how I will end. So I quietly went back to the room and took my phone and left my bag there because I didn't want to carry anything heavy. I was just trying my luck. I prayed to God that if he saves me from that day, that I will never do this work again. So I left the room and I found my way back to the back door because there were so many doors. What I saw at the backyard, I almost fainted. I saw bones, clothes of people they might have killed. So I finally got outside the compound and made it to the gate. But the gate man is there and awake too. So I figured he might not let me go just like that. So I took a bottle just in case I can smash his head and open the gate and run away. But to my greatest surprise, when I got to the gate, the gate man opened the gate for me and told me to run as fast as I can, that I'm the only person that have en ever entered this house and came out alive, that I am even lucky, that he first saw me when I was at the backyard, and he said to himself that if I ever make it to this gate, that he will set me free. And that, that's how God used that gate man to save my life. I ran as fast as I could and I was trying to get a cab, but the location wasn't coming up and no network. So I was walking and running until I saw a truck and I flagged him down and he took me to where I entered bike to the main road and then I booked a cab to my place at Ikeja. And that's how I escaped. And ever since then, 
I changed my ways and started going closer to God because he gave me a second chance and I will use it to serve him. So young girls, please be careful out there. Mm. <coughs> I don't have much to say. Please share this video to get to as many young girls as, as possible because it's always our young girls. I don't know what is wrong with you people. Una no fi keep una leg one place. Like there is so many things you can do as a girl instead of selling your body for money. Please share this video to get to as many people as possible so that this story will get out there and girls will be careful. I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My wife listens to our pastor more than she listens to me. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and you know what time it is, and this is Confess with Sugar, and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. This story is from a guy, and he said, my wife listens to our pastor more than she listens to me, and it's becoming annoying. My wife has always been the churchy type, and I didn't mind at all. Not until if I tell my wife to do something, she will go and ask her pastor if it is the right thing to do. Now, I bought my family, a family Sienna, for my kids and my wife so that school run will be easy for her. And her pastor told her to donate the car for Momo. The way people they take a right story, reading it is even impossible. Okay. He said, I bought a family Sienna for my kids and my wife so that school run will be easy for her. And her pastor told her to donate the car for church evangelism. Without telling me, she did. And I went straight to her pastor and collected the car back. And now she has moved out of the house and won't speak to me or even come see our kids. I am tired. I want my wife home. Should I give the pastor back the car and have a peaceful home or leave my wife? First of all, before I say what I want to say, please, if you are writing story, endeavor to build question mark, um, comma, full stop. So I know when to, because if you were just writing the story, no, amigo, can't they break them, they break them. If I read them, that's why most of the times I'm slow with reading. Because if I read it like that, the way they write it, ah, when I go say, wait be this. So please, my dear, I don't know what to say to you. If you think the car, your wife is worth more than the car, you can give the car to the pastor. But me, I think it's a red flag for a woman to be listening to her pastor more than you listen to your husband because that pastor is not the one feeding you. The pastor is not the one you married to. The pastor is not the one you are doing forever with. So why should you be listening to your pastor more than your husband? You only listen to your pastor when he's telling you did the right thing. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. Not if your husband tell you to do something for him. You now go ask your pastor, is it the right thing to do? I even saw someone that said that he, before she, he makes love to his wife, his wife will go and ask the pastor if it is the right time by big, um, if it's uh, the right time for them to 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 make out as husband and wife what is wrong with you people the thing is that these people that used to carry this church for head if you if you guys will are always overdoing it now your husband bought you a family car to make life of his kids and you easy for you you went and carried it and gave to the pastor if it's me i will hold the car by the time where the wife don't tire to stay outside, she will find her way back home. Oh yes, I don't know what you think this guy should do. Should he give Make him carry the car, go give back to the pastor and collect his wife back. Or make you just leave the wife je -je for them. When she tired, she go come back home. I'll see you guys on my next episode. And please do not forget to share this video to as many as you can. I love you guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye. My boyfriend made me sleep with a snake for money ritual. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a girl, and she said, My boyfriend made me 
with a snake for money ritual. Hey! I met my boyfriend in school and we were love beds. After graduation, one thing led to another and we went our separate ways. And that was how we stopped communicating. And I won't lie, I loved him so much. But we had to do what we did. Two years later, we ran into each other in a mall. And it was like we are just meeting each other for the first time. We hugged and exchanged our numbers again. That night, we texted all through. And there were many butterflies in my belly. Because of the sweet things he was saying. And he also said he wanted us to come back together after I told him I was single. And he said it's God that kept him, kept me for him. But that was a lie because I was dating. But immediately we started talking. I broke up with the guy I was with. One month later, he told me he was into Yahoo. But he will stop once he makes enough money to start a legit business. And I said, okay, no problem. We continued dating and it was awesome. But I noticed one thing is that he never touches me when I'm awake. But if I wake up, he will tell me I was so sweet last night, but I won't remember what happened. But I will feel satisfied in the morning. But when I ask, he will say it was because I was high and he always gets me drunk anytime I was in his house. So one fateful day, I was at his place as usual and I was forming sick. Because I wanted to know what was going on. Because of that, he didn't give me alcohol, but he gave me a glass of juice. But as a science student, I know when my, my drink is spiked. So when he left, I poured away the juice and left the glass cup there. And told him I had finished drinking that I want to go to bed because it was already 10 p.m. I entered the room. 30 minutes later, he came in and I played he touched me and shaked me, but I still didn't move. And that's how he undressed me and opened my legs. I thought he was the one penetrating me, but when I opened my eyes, I saw a snake in between my legs and, and an old man wearing a black cloth in a wheelchair. And boom, I screamed. And my boyfriend hit me with a stool and I passed out. I woke up in the morning and I was asking him what he has done and he told me I wasn't supposed to see that snake and the fact that I've seen it, it means I will have to continue doing it or else I will die. And that's how I've been trapped and I've been sleeping with that snake for a month now. Even when I go to my house, once it's time for me to meet with the snake, my body will be out of control and I will use my hand and go and meet him so I can sleep with the snake. I don't have control of myself anymore and I can't, I can't run away because I will still come back. I have even tried to kill myself to end it all, but I can't. So please help me. If anyone knows where I can go, please help. I can't even go to churches because I have tried and nothing has changed. I don't have anyone in this life, no father, no mother, and no siblings. So this is a cry for help. If anyone knows anyone that can help me, please let me know because I will be in the comments section. Money is not the problem because even my boyfriend said he wants to stop. But the Baba said if he leaves, the both of us will pay the price. That he wanted riches and now that he has gotten it, he will continue paying the price. And the day he thinks of stopping, we both will pay the ultimate price. So please help us. Please, I want to be free. Hmm. There is nothing. Hey, God. The things. Snake. Like I want snake. This life. Eh? The things that go down in this life. Eh? Sometimes when I read these stories, they be me like, say, is this film? Is now film be this have been a reality? But at the end of the day, this is a reality. This is someone's reality. Like, this is what is happening to somebody. So, guys, please, this is a cry for help. This one is not she asking for what to do. She already knows what she wants to do. She wants to live. She wants to be free 
from this predicament. So please, guys, if you have anybody and you know anybody that might help her, a spiritual person, whether traditionally, whether church, or that you know that if she go to, she will be okay and perfectly fine. Please do not hesitate to drop your comments. She will be in the comment section. Please, if there is a number, you can drop the number. There, If there is a name, you can drop the name. If there is a location, you can drop the location. And if you want to be anonymous, you can send it to my DM. I'll see you guys on my next episode. And please don't forget to share this video so that so many people will see it. And if they can help her, they will help her. I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My girlfriend is a complete burden to me. All she do is listen to all these feminists online that says just being a fine girl is enough. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. So guys, just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys. And he said, my girlfriend is a complete burden to me. My girlfriend is 25 years and I am 29 years old. I have been the one taking care of her ever since we started dating. Almost like I am her father and it's exhausting, of course it is. She doesn't like working but her taste is expensive. That most of the times when she requests for something, I wonder if she sees money three on my head. I have tried talking to her but she doesn't listen to me. All she do is listen to all these feminists online that says just being a fine girl is enough. Rubbish. And I won't lie, my girl is so beautiful and hot, but that's not what is going to keep a home. Of course. Sometimes I want to leave her, but if I remember how much I've invested in her, I will just relax. Sorry, sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> Invested. <laughs> you mean invested in wigs, bags, clothes. <laughs> anyway, I will continue. But right now, it's choking me. Because tell me why my girlfriend is asking me for 500k to buy hair in this January that is hard like stone. <laughs> she even knows I haven't paid my rent yet and she doesn't care red flag i love her so much and i don't know if i should leave or stay i keep hoping maybe she will change but it's not looking like she will so should i stay with her and keep praying for a change or leave her <clears throat> as a young man that is still trying to grow do not date a jobless broke girl with expensive tastes she's going to run you to the ground and let me tell you, I can tell you this for a fact, that if you go broke today, my dear, she's going to leave you for another rich guy somewhere. So sometimes it's just better for you to just choose yourself and your peace of mind because she likes expensive things, but she doesn't want to work. So why are you yourself? You are just four years older than her. So why are you doing the job of a father to her? If she cannot go up there, walk, wake up in the morning, go out and look for a job or create a job or start something or sell something to support herself and whatever it is you are going to give to her, my dear, drop her and go for a woman that understands what it is to be a woman. Audience, I don't know if I said the right thing, but please, what is your opinion? Do you think this guy should leave her? or stay with her hoping that she will one day change i'll see you guys on my next episode i love you all bye and please don't forget to share this video i'll see you <laughs> my husband is gay and i'm just finding out i actually suspected him cheating but i never knew it was with a man his pa Imagine going to the office to surprise your husband and you're working on him giving another man dummy. <laughs> Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a girl and she said, My husband is gay and I'm just finding out. 
We got married 2020, and I won't lie, I noticed some woman behaviors in him, but I waved it off with maybe because he wasn't raised in Nigeria. And he has money too. That also blinded me. My husband only touches me when he wants a baby. And once I get pregnant, that will be it. I actually suspected him cheating, but I never knew it was with a man. His PA. Ah! Imagine going to the office to surprise your husband and you working on him giving another man dog. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They were so into each other that they didn't notice I was there and I stood and watched for 30 seconds. And when he saw me, he only said, please, can you excuse us? Hey! <clears throat> And I left. Before I could get home, I saw a lot of 15 million with a test message from him saying, shut up. <laughs> but now I am tired. They no longer hide it. He even brings him to our home. So please give me your advice. What should I do? <laughs> Baby girl, I just feel like um, what you should do is do what you have been doing, collecting your money and shutting up. Because I, I, I put it to you that if this guy was not was broke, you would have left. In fact, not be now we're going to even hear this gist. But because you are enjoying the money you are taking from him, that's why you are still there. Because I don't understand why I would marry a man and then I find out that he's cheating on me, not with a woman, no, with a man. And I was still staying in the marriage. And I'm coming out to ask, what should I do? Anyway, you already know what you want to do. Guys, it's over to you guys. What do you think she should do? Oh my God, I've cleaned my makeup. Anyway, what do you think she should do? Should uh, make she continue to collect the money, they keep quiet, or make she work out more for the marriage? Guys, don't forget to share this video. I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. Take good time, colleagues. My husband is no longer attractive to me because he has gained weight. And his tummy is now too big. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again. And this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. This story is from a girl and she said, My husband is no longer attractive to me because he has gained weight. And his tummy is now too big. I have told him to hit the gym several times, but he doesn't want to listen, and he keeps saying I am the one making him fat with, the, with my food, and I don't understand how. I said okay, and I started giving him smaller portions, but he complains that I am starving him. And honestly, right now, I don't even want him to touch me because I don't see anything to attract me to him. And the reason I am still in this marriage is because of his money. Because if he was broke, I would have left him since. Because what is so hard in being in sheep for your wife? Even me that have given birth to three kids, I am still in sheep because I took care of my body. I don't know what to do. Should I leave my husband or just get myself a sugar boy? Do you know why? Sorry. Do you know why I am giggling? Because this one is not laughing. It's because it's always common with when men say, hey, my, husband, my wife is no longer in shape. I've not really come across where women are saying my husband is not in shape because I know that some women can marry you no matter how you look. But this is a first. And my dear, I'm going to advise you because this is my only little advice to you. Just continue pestering him and ask him, what's up, baby, what's going on? You were in great shape when we got married, and now you are now drifting away. Please, you want us to hit the gym. I don't mind going to the gym with you. One thing about men is that 
it is how you talk to them that will make them react. But if you're always going um, going on about this with eh, shouting up and down, you can't hit the gym, you can't do this. It's the way you communicate your feelings that really matters to this man. If you have to pet him, pet him. If you have to give him, after giving him, then you talk about it. Just make it like, make the environment free and make him feel welcome. Don't make him feel like you're body shaming him because the way you are sounding, you're sounding like you've been telling him, hey, if you don't hit the gym, I'm going to leave you. Can't you see that your demo is weak? And this is not how to communicate. Please, audience, what do you think this woman should do? Should she leave her husband because he has a big tummy now? Or she should get herself a sugar boy. Please do not forget to share this video. And people, some people are saying, sugar, talk fast, fast. How do you want me to be reading and be talking fast, fast? If I read it like that, you will not even understand what I'm trying. It's a story, so I have to take it slow as possible so that people will understand it. So please, if you don't have the patience to listen to my stories or the way I talk, Please kindly leave my page. Don't call me and be telling me to talk fast, fast. I'm not a computer. All right? Bye. Bye. My husband likes watching me have sex with another man before he makes love to me. Hello, guys. Sugar Plum here again. I know what time it is. So this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a girl, and she said... My husband likes watching me with another man before he makes love to me. This Lagos air is something else because the kind of things that goes down in this city still baffles me. So I got married to my rich, rich husband and we never dated at all. It was like an arranged marriage. Or let me just say more like an arranged marriage by both parents. And I didn't have issue with it because the man is hot and rich. So on our wedding night, he didn't want to touch me until I agreed to touch myself in front of him. And it continued like that until one day he brought a man into our home and asked me to make out with the man. Hmm. I thought it was a joke, but he was serious, and he immediately sent me five million as payment. And my husband loves me so much, and he treats me like an egg, but that's his only problem. But I am tired. I don't want to be sharing my body with another man before making love to my husband. I even told my mother, but the money she's getting from him has blinded her. My husband said if I leave, he would take everything from me and my family. And I am so confused on what to do. You know that eh, I used to hear some weird stories. Sometimes I feel like, like, why? Why would you want to be in that kind of situation because of money? Like this story now, when I first read it, I could not comprehend it. I kept on asking myself like, why? Why? Because this is, this is insane. This is, this is a mind blowing because how, how? And you still say he loves you so much. Men that I know that are so jealous, they are so jealous that even when you are talking as a woman that they love when you are talking to another man it pisses them off then your husband is the one bringing man home another man for you to see it before he actually touches you hmm. anyway audience what do you think she should do should she just continue collecting money and doing her husband's bidding or she should just leave the marriage while she can and forget about his money and what her mother is going to think. Which one do you think is the right thing for her to do? So please don't forget to share this video to as many as possible so that we can get more audience. I'll see you guys on my next episode. I love you all. And for those of you asking, Sugar, how many pages do you have? I have 
on TikTok, I think I have three pages. On Facebook, I have two pages. And on Instagram, I have about one personal page and about three business pages. So yes, I have that many, many, many pages. Then I have two YouTube channels. I have Sugar Plum and I have Sugar, Sugar Plum Studios. So yes, I hope I've answered your question. I will see you guys next. Bye. I cheated on my husband with his best man and got pregnant for him. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And I'm going to read out this story for you guys just like I always do. This story is from a wife and she said, I cheated on my husband with his best man and got pregnant for him. <laughs> ha! <laughs> Women. My man is loving, caring, and peaceful. But I feel like he trapped me into marrying him. Three months after we met, he asked me out and I accepted to be his girlfriend because he is rich and handsome and he is a church guy too. He insisted on no sex till after marriage and I agreed. One year later, we got married and on our wedding night, I found out that my husband's D is as small as that of a two-year-old. I couldn't contain my disappointment that night. He even noticed it on my face. So he begged me to stay with him that as long as he can get me pregnant, what else do I need? I shall stayed because of the money, of course, you did. Fast forward to two months after our wedding, his best man started coming to our house often. Trouble. Trouble. Problem. And sometimes my husband will leave him in our house and go out. Yeah? One day I really wanted a man to touch me because I was tired of toys and I purposely went to the living room and undressed in front of him. I am a very curvy girl, so he couldn't resist. He jacked me up and gave it to me hot on our dining table. Wow. Wow. You, you, you wow. You guys have guts, so. You guys have guts. You, you have guts. Hey, I must say that, I must say that's the best I have had. Now I am pregnant and I'm sure it's for my husband. Now I am pregnant and I am sure it's for my husband's best friend. So I don't know what to do. Should I keep the baby and lie to my husband that it's his or just tell him the truth. Just tell him the truth. Just, just tell him the truth. Don't give another man, another man's child. Like, if you know that you could not, that you can't stay, why did he even stay in the first place? Because of his money. And now you are cheating on him in his house with his best friend. Come on now. Audience, this is up to you. You guys should drop your opinion because they will always be in the comment section reading to see what people are saying to them. Please be kind with your comments always. And remember to share this video. I will see you guys on our next episode. Bye. My brother used our mother for money ritual. Fast forward to four months after we buried my mother. My big brother made it big. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and you know what time it is. So this is Confess with Sugar. Just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys. So this story is from a girl and it goes like this. She said, My brother used our mother for money ritual. Hmm. My elder brother has always wanted to be rich at all cost. But I never thought that he would take it far to the extent of using our mother for rituals. On a fateful Saturday morning, my mother slept and never woke up. Not like she was sick or anything. 
In fact, since I was born, my mother has never been admitted in the hospital. Fast forward to four months after we buried my mother, my big brother made it big. He said his client that he was talking to for two years just called him out of the blue and gave him a huge amount of money. We are three. The amount is so big that if we all start spending 500k each every day for the next five years, the money won't finish. My brother doesn't allow us to clean his room. So one day he went out and I started cleaning his room just to surprise him. But I was surprised instead. The things I saw in his room. I saw a small coffin with my mother's picture inside it. A knife piercing through the picture. I was so shocked that I was shivering because my brother looked so calm like someone that can't hurt a fly. But seeing that he is the one that killed my mother, I will never forgive him. Currently, he is doing my papers to travel to Canada to do my masters. And he also opened a big supermarket for me and my other sister. I know he did all this to elevate us from poverty. I know he did all this to elevate us from poverty. But using our mother is not supposed to be the solution. Our mother suffered for us since our dad left us for another woman. And I've always wanted to give her a better life before she leaves this world. But my brother cut her life short because of money. I don't know what to do, and I haven't told anybody this, not even my sister. Please advise me on what to do, because each time I sleep, I see my mother in my dream, saying I should avenge her and tell the world who killed her. But I am scared of what my brother might do to me, because he, if he is capable of doing this to our mother, how much more me? Should I expose the truth, or keep living my life like I saw nothing? Hmm. Oh dear, this is over to you guys. Should she expose the truth or keep living like she saw nothing? Your comments will be well appreciated. So please also share this video. I will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. The Baba told me I have to sleep with my mom every night. That's the price I have to pay to make things work. But now the Baba said I will eat mommy's part for two hours each day hello guys sugar plum here again and this is confess with sugar and just like i always do i'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to this story is from a guy and, and he said i'm devastated i got myself into a big mess because of poverty i'm from a very poor background and i'm the first child I watched my parents struggle to raise us, especially my mom, after the death of our father. She did her best to cater for us. I also did my best to help her. I quit school and did other odd jobs just to put food on our table. Three years ago, my sister had kidney disease. We had no money to help. I saw my sister sleeping away and I couldn't help myself. A friend of mine introduced me to one Baba then for money ritual. I was desperate, so I followed him. All I wanted was to have enough money to help my sick sister. The Baba told me I have to sleep with my mom every night. That's the price I have to pay to make things work. So I agreed. I usually cook mom's food with weed any night I want to sleep with her. I don't enjoy the act, but as money was coming, I didn't mind at all. I got a big house and I changed my siblings to good schools, but now the Baba said I will eat mommy's private part for two hours each day. At least I managed to sleep with my mom, with lights off, but eating her private part is not what I can do. I'm sorry I did all that because I was desperate. The Baba said, if I don't cooperate, I will go mad. Please, I need help. I don't wish to continue again. I just want to be free. They can take back the wealth. But I need my peace because my siblings are always complaining that I am behaving strange. Please help me, sugar. Connect me to any spiritual healer that you know. 
I do not want to go mad. See, uh, in this life, everything is all about stages. As long as you are working, as long as you are doing something, you just have to believe in God and be patient that one day your own time will come. Eh? Like, I, I can't believe what I just read. You're, you're sleeping with your mother. Like, like, Jesus Christ. Just because of money. And now you do not even have peace. Anyway, audience, over to you guys. Do you got, what do you, in fact, this one is not asking what he should do. He already knows what he wants to do. So if you're somewhere, you are someone, you're out there, you know you can help him, you're a spiritual person, or you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that might help him, please drop it in the comment section. And don't forget to always be kind with your comments. And I will see you guys on my next episode. And don't forget, share this video, please share video to share video is not it's not going to it's not going to it's not going to cost you anything even one that it will not cost you it's free please just share 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 i'll see you guys on my next episode bye i am 42 but i used my whole family for ritual but i am the only one doing well and that's cause i used five of my siblings for ritual Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a guy and he said, I am 42 but I used my whole family for ritual. I have three brothers and two sisters but I am the only one doing well and that's cause I used five of my siblings for ritual. So this is what happened. After I graduated, I looked for job for complete three years without anybody looking my way. Wasn't because my result wasn't good because I graduated with a first class in engineering. My mother is always pressuring me to make money and help my siblings because as the first son of the family, it is my responsibility. So one fateful afternoon, I ran into an old classmate and from the look of things, he was swimming in money. So we exchanged contacts that day. So three days later, he called me to come and hang out with him. So I went and that's where I told him all my predicaments and he promised to help me. Two weeks later, he opened up to me on how he made his money and asked if I was willing to do it. I told him no, that I can't go diabolic. So I went home that day and to my greatest surprise, I saw my things outside. My mother threw my things out, saying that after they struggled to get me through school, that I have nothing to show for it and that I should leave her house and only come back if I have made money. So I called out my classmate and he came and carried me to his house. I wasn't sure if I was going to do the ritual, but after what my mom did, I decided to do it. So we went to Baba, and after everything, he said I will use my sister's star, that she's going to be a big singer, but he will use her destiny and replace mine, because he said my own destiny isn't bright to get me rich. So I did it, and four months later, I made money through one deal, and our story changed. I built my family a very big mansion and placed everybody on monthly salary of 1 million naira each. Except my sister that I used her destiny. Her own salary is 3 million monthly. But yet, she can't attest to what she uses the money for. But I understand because I know what I did. So I indulge her a lot. Baba told me that I will be using each member of my family's destiny and I've exhausted all and now Baba is asking for my son's destiny and I don't want to render my first son useless because of money. And he said if I don't do it, I will lose everything and including my innocent son. So someone should please help me out of this problem. I will pay anything but please save me and my son. I know that I should have considered my siblings before using their destiny to make money. 
But now I understand how he feels because now it's my own son and I can't do that to my son. Please help me out. I can pay anything, anything, any amount just to make sure that I come out from this. <sighs> so guys, you guys have heard this. This story is from, I don't even know what to say. So whatever you think your opinion is, please drop it in the comment section. And if you think you can help this brother, out of this situation he said he doesn't mind paying anything so please drop it in the comment section if it's a number and you don't want it to be public you can send it directly to my dm on instagram i'll see you guys on my next episode bye my mother-in-law wants to destroy my home because i don't have a child but five years and i'm yet to conceive because i don't have a womb but my husband doesn't know this Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a woman and she said, My mother-in-law wants to destroy my home because I don't have a child. It's been five years since I got married to my Igbo husband from Imo State. I am from Rivers, so the mother didn't really like me for her son. But my husband insisted that I am the love of his life, so she had no choice. But five years and I'm yet to conceive because I don't have a womb. But my husband doesn't know this, and not even my mother knows about this too. When I was in university, I got pregnant and I didn't want to keep it, so I went for an abortion. In the process, I had complications that needed my womb to be taken out or I would die. So my friend made the decision to save my life, in which I am grateful for. When I met my husband, he was everything I wanted and more, and I couldn't just lose him because of my past. But his mother is like my nemesis. She doesn't let me breathe, and her son is starting to listen to her. He even brings girls for my husband so he can choose from and marry a second wife or get one pregnant. My husband is an only son, and that even made matters worse. I want to be free, but I need to get rid of this woman. Please, I need tips. I will be in the comment section, because I need her out of my way so I can convince my husband for us to adopt a child or children. Because if the mother stops disturbing and stops filling his head with all this married second wife, get a woman pregnant and live your life. He will be able to listen to me so that we can adopt a child. So guys, what do you guys think this girl should do? Because me, I just feel like since you know that your womb is no longer there, why are you suffering the young man? You see that you tell him if he's going to accept his fate and still be with you, that's his decision. But deceiving him, and he thinks maybe you guys are just having fertility issue, not knowing that you can't even get pregnant. I think you should just tell him the truth. Or audience, what do you guys think? Should she continue lying to the husband and trying to get rid of the, of the mother-in-law or tackle the main issue, which is you not having a womb and lying to everybody? So she will be in the comment section. Don't forget to share this video to at least at least five of your friends the more people the more audience the more suggestion i'll see you guys on my next episode bye i think my mother tied my father in a bottle somewhere ha hello guys sugar plum here again and this is confess with sugar and just like i always do i'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to so this story is from a girl and she said i think my mother tied my father in a bottle somewhere ha Because I don't understand why a married woman with kids will bring home another man while my father just sits and watch. Hmm. I am 22 years old and my younger sister is 16 years old. What is happening in my house, I only see it in movies when Mama G will tie a man in a bottle and be controlling him up and down. Not until my mom started doing it to my dad. It all started after my dad lost his job and he started staying at home while my mom goes to work and she also started providing for us all. My dad tried so many times to get a new job but he couldn't so he gave up. 
My mom started with sending him to wash plates and cook and do other things that we, her children, should be the one doing. At first, I thought it was love, but seeing how sad my dad always looked made me understand he isn't doing those things with his clear mind. Imagine one hot afternoon, my mom came back with a man she said is her work colleague. Instead of them to use the parlor to do the work they want to do, they went into the room and chased my father out. And my father said nothing. He just sat there and watched. When the man left, my father went in and served my mom food in the room. Chai! So many other things that I don't want to say here. But please, I think we need help for my dad. Or do you people think it's love or jazz? Which one do you think? Please, I'll be reading comments. <sighs> please. Me, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. To, I don't know if I should say this is jazz or this is love. I don't know. But for you to be, for a man to sit in his house and his wife will bring in another man and chase him out of the room. And she stayed in there probably for some minutes or one hour plus with the man. And then he, the man left. She now, he now went to serve the wife food, like telling the wife, you did well. You did well. Do it again. I don't know what is. I don't know if it, this. I, I don't think that is love. So it's either it's love or it's jazz. So what do you people think this is? Is it love or jazz? I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. He insisted on a DNA test to be sure. And lo and behold, he is my son's father. Now he is saying he wants his son back because his wife couldn't give him a child. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. This story is from a woman and she said, I am in trouble and I don't know how to come out of it. I met my husband while we were in Unizik, Oka in Anambra State, Nigeria and it was love at first sight. We were so attached to each other that anywhere you see my husband Uche, look around, you will see me there. He proposed to me on my graduation day and I accepted to be his wife because why not? He is rich, handsome, intelligent, hardworking and a son to a big businessman. Our wedding was the talk of town. After our marriage, we moved to Malaysia and that's where we started our lives properly. But we only had one issue, which was childlessness. Doctors said I am okay, but my husband wasn't okay. But they said his condition can be cured. With the right medication, he will be able to father a child. So three years down the line, it was same old story and our parents were on our neck for grandchildren. So one night I had serious arguments with my husband and I left the house and called a friend of mine who is a man to come keep me company in a bar because I was drinking. He got there and we drank some more. To the extent I got really drunk, so he offered to take me home. But instead, he took me to his place, and one thing led to another. We got intimate. Two weeks later, I found out that I was pregnant. I told my husband, and we were all happy. I gave birth to a baby boy. He is now 15 years old. And I never got pregnant again. Last week, I ran into that my friend, and I was with my son that day. And immediately he saw my son. He said he looked like him. And he remembered what happened between us 15 years ago. He insisted on a DNA test to be sure. And lo and behold, he is my son's father. I want to sink into the ground when I saw the result. And honestly, I didn't know he was the father. Now he is saying he wants his son back. Because his wife couldn't give him a child. And the fact he found about his son... He won't let go. And if I refuse, he will sue me. Now, I don't even know how to tell my husband because this thing might kill him or send him into deep depression. I don't know what to do or who to talk to at all. He loves Godway so much that I can't imagine what his life is going to be like if he finds out about this. I even offered the other guy money so he can vanish, but he refused. I said the only thing he wants is his son. 
please how do i tackle this i am so confused and broken at the same time because if i wasn't drunk all this wouldn't have happened please what should i do i will be in the comments hmm. Omo. hey god i beg oh hey me i don't even know what to say what do you think she should do i beg should she tell her husband, see, this This is what is happening? Because the other man is saying that there is no way I'm going to live without my son. And we are even talking, she's only even talking about the man alone. What about the boy? What will this new information do to him? Please, guys, if you think you have any way that she can resolve this problem or you have a solution, please drop it in the comment section. And don't forget, please be kind with your comments because these people are always in the comment section. Comment section should be accommodating so that people will have the free mind to come and share their story. Okay? I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My wife made my life miserable because I brought her to UK to live with me and study. She called the police on me and told them I was a threat to her life and that of her daughters. She threw me out of my own house. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a guy and he said, My wife made my life miserable because I brought her to UK to live with me and study. I paid for her school fees here until she graduated and started working and she did law by the way and she finally became a fancy lawyer. Ah, my wife was my dream girl. Her body was perfect and her dark skin was stunning. I fell for her the first day I met her and from there I knew I would marry her. So we started dating and we kicked it off from there and then i traveled to uk three months later and two years later i brought her up to come live and complete her studies here because she has always wanted to be a lawyer and a lawyer in uk is a big deal so i wanted her to win too so after she graduated and started working in one nice law firm and she was earning about ten thousand dollars monthly and I was really happy because that means more money for the house. I work as a sales manager in a supermarket. She grew distant and no longer wanted to go on date night with me because she was embarrassed of me. She even turned my two daughters against me because she buys them expensive gifts and showers them with money. She started dating one of her work boyfriends and the day I found out and confronted her, she called the police on me and told them I was a threat to her life and that of her daughters. She threw me out of my own house because women has more power over men here. My daughters collaborated the story that I am abusive when I have never raised my hands or voice on my wife, but she took everything I have and left me with nothing. I only left there with my clothes and I ended up in the streets of UK. If not that I have a savings account, I used to put money in Nigeria every month. That's how I would have ended up begging for food. I slept on the streets for three days before I finally got through to my sister in Nigeria to send me money to get a hotel to stay while I look for an apartment. I had friends, but they were all married, and I didn't want to bother anyone because of the kind of woman I married. I started all over again, but I am glad I was able to push through, even though I had to relocate back to Nigeria. But the worst mistake you will make as a married Nigerian man is to bring your wife abroad, because when they get here, they turn to tigers. Nigerian men, if you must marry a Nigerian woman, Make sure she stays in Nigeria and never set her foot in UK or any other countries. This is an advice. I don't need anybody's help. I just wanted to share my experience with a bad wife. You women that if they take you out from Nigeria and relocate you to UK or Canada or anywhere, 
then you will turn tiger, you will turn against the man that did everything because he loves you and he wanted to give you a better life. You guys should be ashamed of yourself. And I'm happy that his story did not end the bad way. So guys, do you think it's okay for you to get married and then relocate to abroad with your wife? Or do you think it's okay if you want to relocate, you relocate alone and leave your wife in Nigeria? Which one do you think is the best? Drop your comments and don't forget to share this video to as many as possible. I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My mother would come to my house and rain insults on her. She called her all sorts of names and made her eat and drink all sorts of things like lizard water. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a guy and he said, I have been married for six years and for four years of marriage, we were looking for a child. In fact, that four years was the worst four years of my wife's life because me and my family made it unbearable for her. My mother would come to my house and rain insults on her. She called her all sorts of names and made her eat and drink all sorts of things like lizard water and other things that I can't mention, all because she wanted her to get pregnant. Me, on the other hand, treated her really bad. All the times that my mother and sister would come to my house to maltreat her, I never for once stood up for her because I really wanted a child and I wanted the child to come from my wife. So I stopped saying I love you to her. I stopped caring for her, like giving her money for her upkeep and her maintenance. She would cry herself to sleep every night and I felt no pity for her. I was watching my wife slowly lose herself, but I couldn't help it because I was just focused on the fact that I need a child. So I neglected her. Even the car I got for her, my sister came and took it and I said nothing. God finally gave us a baby girl and my wife changed. It was as if she was just waiting to give me the child I so much wanted. She no longer cooks for me. She comes home late. She sleeps out without telling me. She talks to my mother and my sibling anyhow she wants. In fact, she told me to my face that she would deal with me and my family for treating her like a slave because she couldn't bear me a child on time. I thought she was bluffing, but to my greatest surprise, she wasn't. When we got married, her lawyer friend insisted on we signing the infidelity clause. We did sign it. So unknown to me that all the time I was cheating on her with other women that I thought I was smart. She had someone follow me and always taking pictures. So the day I got tired of her behavior and I told her I wanted a divorce, she showed me pictures of me with other women. So if I go ahead with the divorce, 90% of everything I own will be hers. And I don't want to lose my sweat. So please, how do I get my wife back? How do I win her back? How do I get her to be soft-hearted woman that she used to be? How do I get the lovely woman I married back? You know, this also goes to say that men cannot take 1% of what they dish out. You've been maltreating her, treating her like you like because she could not give you a child. Sometimes, why don't you guys stop and ask, what if it is my fault? What if it is not her fault? You made life unbearable for her and you said it with your mouth. And now she's paying you back in your own coin. You cannot bear it and you are asking for what you should do. Anyway, guys, the comment section is over to you guys. How do you think this man can win back his wife? Because obviously he doesn't want to lose everything he worked for all his life. How do he get her back? What do you think he can do to maintain the peace and sanity that he once enjoyed in his home? And just like I always say, make the comment section accommodating to everybody. And share this video to at least five of your friends or your loved ones. I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My wife lied to me that she is AA. Only for me to find out that she is AS after my two children was born SS. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a man and he said, My wife lied to me that she is AA. Only for me to find out that she is AS after my two children was born SS. I and my wife met when I was 30. 
All I wanted to do was settle down and start a family. And I guess my wife saw the desperation in me and played along with me. She loved me like I wanted to be loved. She was soft-spoken. She was calm. In fact, she was a female. She let me be the man and everything I hated, she avoided. So I was smitten. I once asked her about her genotype and she said she was AA because I am AS and I can't marry another AS. I also told her mine. Fast forward to after we got married, she got pregnant and gave birth to our twin daughters. Some months after their birth, they started getting sick all the time. So we took them to the doctor. They did tests on them and it came out that they are sickle cell. I said it wasn't possible that my wife is AA and I am AS. And that's when my wife started crying that she lied to me, that she didn't want to lose me. And that's why she lied about her genotype. She also said she thought a miracle will happen and we won't have kids that are sickle cell patients. Now I will have to constantly live in fear, knowing that I can lose my kids any day. They might not even live up to 18. I want to divorce my wife because I was deceived and I need to have my children that I am sure will stay alive. I will continue taking care of them because they are my children, but I can't live with a woman that lied and deceived me. I hope I am doing the right thing. When we people understand that there are some miracles that God have already done for you, you don't need him to come down and do another one for you. AS cannot marry AS. AS cannot marry AS. AA, AA, perfect match. AA, AS, perfect match. AS, AA. See, AS and AS cannot marry. The sooner you people understand that, the better for you. The sooner you understand that when you give birth to a sickle cell child, that you will almost spend everything you have trying to keep them alive. And sometimes they don't even live up to 80. Sometimes they don't even live up to 3 or 4 years. So instead of you to always say, God is going to do this, God is going to do that, why not use your brain? Because there are some miracles that God has already done. Doctors on earth, when, when God created doctors, he, he was not a mad person when he created doctors that can ascertain to you, this person and this person can marry, this person and this person can marry. Please, people should avoid future trauma, future problem. It's better you cry now. Have the heart break separate instead of what do you people even ask yourself when you guys start dating now he asks that you lie to him some people will not even ask is when they get married and they give birth that's when they will now find out that oh we are asas and we are not supposed to get married at least if you are with somebody be honest with them tell them this is how it is if they love you enough and want to go ahead they will know that they are in it and this is what they signed up for Please, what do you think this man should do? Because he's saying that he wants to get another wife. Me, I don't know. So your comments will be well welcomed. Just like I always say, please try and be accommodating with your comments. Nobody is above mistake. And I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. I am in love with my yoga and I want to snatch him from my madam. This is my gender. Rest. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a girl, and she said, I am in love with my yoga, and I want to snatch him from my madam. This is my gender. Rest. Rest. <laughs> Which one be you want to snatch? You want to snatch my same husband, you still come out, they talk up. <laughs> My Oga is a very handsome, chubby man with lots of money in his pocket, which is a very important aspect. My Oga works from home and my madam is an office woman. She goes to work very early and comes back home very late. My Oga and madam always fight because of this. My Oga even asked my madam to stop working and focus on their marriage, but she is a career woman and she won't listen. My Oga is very rich and he has money and his money can never finish even if he stops working. 
My ogre was very angry one day and he got high. And when I came to serve him food, he grabbed me and we did the do. I have been giving him back and front since then. He used to complain about not having a child yet. And I know if I get pregnant for him now, he will marry me and start taking care of me and my baby. Married women should slow down with always wanting to be a man in their household. My ogre is traveling for two weeks on a business trip. And he booked it for me and him because his wife can't follow him because she is working. Once it's time for us to go, I will call in sick and tell my madam that I want to go stay with my mother so she can take care of me. And off I will go with my man. And after I finish caring and pampering him for that two weeks, once we come back, he will marry me straight and auntie will marry her job. First of all, this is the reason why people don't want to have housemates anymore. Because once you bring in a, in a female into your household, some of these females become the, we the weapon fashioned against you. This should actually be some of the conversations you need to have with your partner before you guys get married. Do you want me to be a stay-at-home mom? Can you be a stay-at-home wife? Can you quit your job and take care of me? Would you want me to quit my job and be a full-time housewife? And if it is what you both want and you guys think that it can work for you, please, you can go ahead and get married. But if your husband is the type that likes his wife to stay at home and you are a career woman, you can see that it's not going to be compatible. It's not going to work between you guys. So always have these important conversations. So, auntie, the way you want to wreck another woman's home, know that they will wreck your own home. If you snatch him from her, one day another woman will snatch him from you. What goes around comes back around. Share this video so that it can get to this woman that they are talking about in this video. So that she will know how she will get to tackle it. How her next move. So if this video goes viral, I know that if you hear this story and they are talking about you, there is no way you will not know. So if you hear this story and you know it's you and you have a mate, send the girl out and have a conversation with your husband. I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. I have been cheating on my wife for the past three years and she recently found out about my cheating. She should be praying for me to change because that's what our mothers do when they find out their husband is cheating on them. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a guy and he said, I have been cheating on my wife for the past three years and she recently found out about my cheating. I asked for her forgiveness and she agreed that she has forgiven me, but that was just a scope because I just found out that my wife has been cheating on me for the past three months with a very wealthy boy. I am aware I am not my wife's spec because she has always liked tall, dark guys, but I am fair and average height. I know she settled for me because of love. But she has gotten herself a very tall, dark guy that she has been seeing for the past three months now. And I swear I can't bear the thought of another man enjoying my wife. I know I have been a bad husband, but she is a woman and women uphold virtue. But my wife is the opposite of a virtuous woman. She should be praying for me to change because that's what our mothers do when they find out their husband is cheating on them. What if I am not doing it with my clear eye? What if that lady used juju on me? And what if the lady used kayamata on me? So I won't leave her. But instead of my wife to go to church and intercede on my behalf, she is cheating on me. I used to think I married a good woman, but now I know better. The worst part is that she is rubbing it on my face. She even accepted a car gift from the boy. And when I asked her to return it, she said she won't. If I am not comfortable with it, that I should divorce her. All of a sudden, she doesn't allow me to touch her because she said I am boring in bed. She now goes clubbing. And my wife is a very curvy woman. Even after three kids, she's still very much in shape. No stretch mark or any sign that she's even married, not to talk of being a mother. 
She even hired a maid to help her care for the children so she can have enough time to go out with her new boyfriend. I know what I did to her before was wrong and I know I don't want to lose my wife. So what should I do? Pray for her. Yes. Intercede on her behalf. You know. You can go to church. You can... You can go on your knees because maybe she might not even be doing it with her clear eye. Or, please, what do you guys think he should do? Maybe he should pray for her, go to church, take her pictures to everywhere. Maybe she's not even doing it with her clear eye. What if that man used juju on her too? What if that man is using a man kayamata on her to hold her? So please, pray for her. She's your wife. And you are a virtuous man, or are you not? As a virtuous man, you should be praying for your wife. Abio, guys, please, what do you think you should do? Please drop your comments in the comment section. And just like I always say, make the comment section accommodating for everyone. Nobody is above mistake. Share this video to at least five of your family members or your loved ones. I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My boyfriend left me and married a village girl after using me to get his dream job. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a girl and like she said, My boyfriend left me and married a village girl after using me to get his dream job. So I am from Imo State, but I live in Lagos State, which is where I met my boyfriend. He is 28 years old and I am 25 years old. When we started dating, things weren't moving on well for either of us. He worked in a restaurant as a waiter, but this is someone that has a first class in business studies. So I often go to wait for him to close from work so we can go home together. So one day, the owner of the restaurant saw me and he made advances at me. But I told him that my boyfriend works for him and that I can't cheat on my man. When my boyfriend came out, I told him what his boss said. He looked at me and said, that my boss has money. If he asks you out again, please accept so we can be making money off him. I thought he was joking. But after three days, he came with an offer that his boss said, if I can spend two nights with him, he will promote him to the manager of the restaurant and he will pay him up to 400k monthly. My boyfriend was earning 80k monthly as a waiter. I wasn't okay with it, but he convinced me and told me this new pay will change our lives and make our lives easier once we get married. So when I heard that, I said, no problem, at least he will marry me. If this is the sacrifice I will make for love, then so be it. I went and spent two days with the boss. His boss is old, but what this man did to me in two days, no man can do it to me in one month. It was like war. We did it like five times every night. And for one week, I was not working well. My boyfriend got the promotion. But can you imagine that just three months after I made this sacrifice, my boyfriend went to the village and secretly married one small girl. And when I confronted him, he said he can't marry someone that can sell her body to get what she wants. I cried and cried, but eventually I stopped crying and I moved on. So one day I ran into his boss and told him everything that happened. So he fired my ex boyfriend saying that he isn't a trustworthy person that if he can betray a woman that went to that extent for him then he can also betray him in business my ex and his mother said i am wicked for doing that please am i wicked <coughs> uh this is um this is a complicated story. So, guys, over to you guys. Do you think she did the right thing by telling the boss what happened? And do you think the boss did the right thing by firing the guy? So, please drop your comments and try and be accommodating with your comments. Because these people, they are always in the comment section reading comments. Please share this video to at least five of your loved ones or your family. And I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye.
My girlfriend is a big influencer in Nigeria, but she is a very dirty girl. So when I entered inside, I saw packs of takeaway plates and drinks, unfinished burger and plates that had maggots in them in the kitchen. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a guy and he said, My girlfriend is a big influencer in Nigeria, but she is a very dirty girl. But if you see her Instagram pictures, you will think that this girl is an angel. So I met my babe on IG because as a normal big boy, I don't go for low budget girls. I go for the ones that will shake my leg and my account. Me, I don't follow for all those guys where they ask women, what do you bring to the table? Because my own table is already full, so no need. So let's say her name is Amara, but that's not her name. Amara is a fine, classy girl that lives her life on IG. In fact, she is every man's dream. I DM'd her and I asked her for her number. She gave me and I went straight to the point. I asked her to be my girlfriend and she accepted. So that night, I asked for her account number and I sent her one million for accepting to be my girlfriend. One week later, I booked us a flight to Mauritius and then Ghana and back to Nigeria. I stay in Abuja, she stays in Lagos. So she's always coming to Abuja to visit me. So last month, I just wanted to surprise her. So I called her best friend and asked for her home address that I wanted to send her some rose flowers for surprise, which I did because I wanted to distract her and her friend from the main surprise. So in the evening, I pulled up around 4 p.m. with a full makeup team with the people that would dress her because I booked us a reservation for 7 p.m. So I came on time so they can take their time and do what they want. I got in and I knocked. My babe opened the door and the stench that came from her house and on her body was unbearable. So when I entered inside, I saw packs of takeaway plates and drinks, unfinished burger and plates that had maggots in them in the kitchen. I almost threw up, I won't lie. So I was like, maybe it's laziness that made her not touch her living room. So I thought I was pressed that I wanted to use her restroom. Oh boy, what I saw there, eh? How can a lady's toilet have dark under? I was only happy that I went in alone and I told the makeup crew to wait in the car. I am sure they would have made videos of it. So I told her, let's go to my hotel and get her a room to do her makeup because I wasn't going to let my money waste. So we went on the date and after that, I went back straight to Abuja and I went straight to my doctor and this girl gave me infection. And that's how I stopped calling her after I treated my infection. I can't deal with having a girlfriend that is as dirty as she is. Because even after everything I saw, each time I look at her, I remember all the things that I saw in her house. Some girls are so dirty in this life. Fake life girls everywhere. Before you put on that makeup on your face, please try and clean your environment and take care of your inner body. Some Instagram influencers are working infection. Tway. If as a girl you cannot keep your house, your body, your environment clean, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? There is no excuse for, for, for leaving your house to be in a mess. If your house was in a mess as, as messy as he described in this video, my dear, you need therapy because I don't understand what is going on with you. As a girl, your top priority should be your environment, your, your body, because our body is open. Take care of yourself. Take care of your inner beauty before you take care of your outer beauty. Hmm? Because it is your inner beauty that will maintain your outer beauty. If you think there is any tips on how to be a clean girl that you can leave for this girl under the comments, maybe if she sees this video, she will know that she's the one they are talking about. Maybe she will take some tips. I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. I've been married to a ghost for the past five years and I recently just found out. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a woman and she said, I've been married to a ghost for the past five years and I recently just found out. All my life I've stayed in Abba and that is where I met my husband. 
My husband is a calm and gentle young man in his early 30s. When we met, we kind of clicked. It was almost love at first sight. So let me go back to even how we met. I own a boutique where I sell male stuffs. I noticed that my husband always comes around my shop almost immediately after I opened my shop. I noticed this for about a week before he started talking to me. He started asking me if he wants to make jollof rice, what are the things he needs to get. Then I will tell him things to get. Sometimes I even follow him to the market to get those things. So that's how we became friends. And we were friends for like four months before he asked me out. One thing I liked about my husband is that he's kind, calm, gentle, lovely, affectionate. In fact, he was a walking green flag. It was easy for me to fall in love with him. While we were dating, he always told me he was the only child. In fact, he is the only surviving person in his family. He said his father was an only child and his mother was an only child and he was an only child too. We dated for three months before we got married. It was a small wedding, nothing fancy, because we didn't have money for a big wedding. And I also considered my husband because what is the need of having a big wedding if none of his family members will be there? Because according to him, he doesn't have any. I never experienced anything bad in my marriage. When I hear people say marriage is bad, I can't relate because my husband made sure that I was well taken care of financially, emotionally, and physically. I have two kids for him. We've been married for five years until I found out that my husband has died since 2015. I know so many people will ask, how can you be married to a man and you don't visit his village for five years? But me, since I was born, I've never visited my village and that's because of the bad stories my parents told me. So even after their passing, I detested going to the village because we are scared of village people. But you know how kids are. By the time they start growing, they will start asking for things that you can't even give them. One day, my son came back from school. He said, Mommy, when we went on break, my friends were discussing about how fun the village was. That they want to go to the village and visit their grandparents. I tried telling my kids that we can't go to the village, but kids are kids. They want what they want. So they went on and on about how they want to go to the village to the extent that both of them fell sick. So I told my husband, let's take them to the village because I've never been in my village, so I don't know anybody. Since he grew up in the village, it is better we go to his own village. At least he will have an experience and at least he will know where to take the children to when they finally visit. My husband told me that I know he has nobody in the village. I said I know, but we can lodge in a hotel. Then from there, we can go to the village. If your village does not have a good hotel, we can always transport ourselves from the hotel to the village just to make sure that our kids are okay because they were demanding and they fell sick because we could not meet up with their demands. And the last thing I want is to lose my children just because I don't want to visit the village. My husband said okay, but he kept on postponing the village trip. We were supposed to go last Xmas, but we couldn't because my husband suddenly wasn't feeling well at some point. I got pissed because I still want to know where my husband came from. I told him that even if you don't have anybody there, let me at least know where the man I married came from. Because when he came to marry me, he at least went to my hometown, so he knows where I come from, even though I do not visit the village. But when he did my traditional rite, he had to go see my people and pay my bride price to my kinsmen. Even though we did not sleep in the village, but at least we traveled to my village and he knows where I am coming from. So it's not a bad idea if I know where my husband is coming from. So after much fuss about it, my husband finally gave in and we made preparation on how we are going to travel to his village. We said we are going to spend at least three days there. So... The kids can run around and play with sand and do whatever it is they want to do before we come back to Abba and continue our life. My husband told me he is from Bini. To cut the long story short, we got to his exact village and he told me that he was going to call one of his aunties from one compound. And I reminded him that I thought you said you don't have any family member. And he told me that he called this woman his auntie because the woman was one of the women that took care of him when his parents died. And he hasn't seen her in years so it would be a good thing to see her and say hi to her 
and also bring her to see his children. He pointed a compound for me that I should go there and wait for him. That, that is his father's compound. So I took my two kids and we went there. We met one woman and one old woman there. I can say they are in their early 80s. So I greeted the woman and the man. The woman told me this boy looks like my son. I was so stunned to speak because how can my son look like your son? I told her I don't understand what you are saying. This is my son and yes, people look alike. She said, no, I mean, this boy looks like my grandson. He looks like somebody my son will give birth to. I said, please, who is your son? Because this woman was all over my son. And that was the first time I've set my eyes on them. And surprisingly, my son was all over this woman too. My son is very strict. When I mean strict, he's very strict. He doesn't allow anybody to carry him up except me and his father. But immediately he saw this woman. He warmed up to her that I was surprised. For my little girl, I was just holding her in my arms. So I told the woman that me and my husband came to this village, that he pointed this place as his compound and asked me to wait here that he is coming. The woman told me, she said, am I sure this is the compound the person pointed? Because as long as she can remember, she and her husband are the only people that own this house. And I told her that my husband said he is coming. That when he comes, he will explain himself to her. She offered me water, but I rejected it because I hardly take things from strangers, even water. So I was waiting for my husband. I waited for my husband for exact two hours. In the space of these two hours, I was calling my husband. I was blowing up his phones. His numbers were switched off. I was scared. I thought something had happened to him. So when he didn't show up, the woman came out and started asking me questions again. She said, am I sure this is the right compound, the man? I call my husband pointed. I said, yes. Then I brought out my phone. I showed her a picture of me and my husband with our children. That is when she screamed. She shouted at the top of her voice. Her husband came running and asked her what is wrong. She just handed him over the phone. And immediately the man saw the picture. He started screaming too. Before I could know what was happening, people have gathered and they were asking what is going on. And each time I give anybody my phone to see my husband's picture, they all start screaming. And then I got scared and they all started telling me that this guy had died since 2015. That he died in an accident while he was going to work. I said that's not possible. Maybe they are mistaking my husband for another person. Immediately, I started breaking out our videos that we made together going to places, going out on dates, taking our children on dates, and us going to church. After seeing all this, the woman kept on crying. Me, I wasn't crying because I was just in a confused state. So the woman went inside, brought out this man's picture. She showed me some video clips from when he was buried. I couldn't believe my ears. In fact, I couldn't believe anything I was hearing. I thought this was just a movie or it was just a bad dream that I would wake up from it. But it was my reality. I called my husband. I called, I called and called. But he never picked up his phone. They showed me his grave. They showed me where he was buried. They showed me all the proof I needed to see that this man that I got married to in Abba is a dead person. I looked at my kids, especially my son that is a striking resemblance of his father. I couldn't believe my ears. I couldn't believe that I've been in love with a ghost. I used to hear about these stories and I used to tell myself that it's not possible for a ghost to ever exist. In fact, I never believed in ghosts or anything of sort, but that was the worst day of my life. I went back to Abba after everything and after some rituals were performed for my kids and I. Immediately I entered my apartment. I found out that everything that belongs to my husband has disappeared. When I mean everything, I mean everything from his toothbrush down to his underwear. All his picture frames in our house were nowhere to be found. Anything that would remind me of him, apart from my son, vanished. Up to date, whenever I remember what happened, I still don't believe it. Sometimes I feel like I'm living in a dream or something, or there is an explanation for what happened. And I've been looking for that explanation since everything happened and I can't seem to find it. My son and my daughter is doing well. They keep asking me where is daddy and I don't know what to tell them. 
but i know that one day i'm going to tell them what happened how do i even explain that to them it would have been better i had kids out of wedlock it would have been better people say that my children doesn't have his father instead of telling my children that their father was a dead person before i got married to him so many times i've typed this story to send it to you sugar but each time i keep on deleting them because i don't know how to even begin but today i must have the courage to tell you because i know that so many things on this planet can't be explained but the reason why i'm putting this out there because before you get married to anybody make sure you know them even before you commit to that person make sure you know them from head to toe i was just in love with this person that i was just blinded by the love and the care he showed me it is a hard pill for me to swallow until now but i am healing though i just want to tell you kenneth that i will always love you no matter what and i will take care of our children until we meet to part no more man I think this is the most shocking story I've ever read. <sighs> what are your thoughts? In uh, what are your thoughts? Do you believe in ghosts? Do you think that people can reincarnate? Do you think that ghosts can, like people can die and then go to another place to continue living their life? Please drop your comments in the comment section. Don't forget to share this video to at least five of your friends, and I'll see you guys on my next episode bye i love my girlfriend but i am in love with her mother hello guys sugar plum here again and this is confess with sugar and just like i always do i'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to so this story is from a guy and he said i love my girlfriend but i am in love with her mother All my life, I've always been attracted to older women. During my school days, I only dated women that are like four or three years older than me because they were the kind of women I liked. So when I wanted to get married, I told my friends that I wanted to start dating someone, that I want to settle down. They were all happy for me. They said I should go ahead. So two weeks later, I found a girl. She is older than me. She is 33 years old while i am 28 years old so i told my friends that i found someone and i would like them to meet her they all agreed and i made a reservation in a restaurant so the dinner went well and everybody was happy so when she went out to ease herself my friend asked me and i told him that she is three years older than me and that's when everybody started telling me that why would i want to marry somebody that is older than me and i told them that i don't care but they said the world is going to care and especially my mom might not like her because she's older than me. So I told my mom about her and exactly what my friend said happened. My mom did not like her and me, I can't marry someone that my mom doesn't approve of. So I broke up with her and then my mom introduced me to her friend's daughter who is three years younger than me. We started dating and everything was going on well. And I popped the question and she said she will marry me. So I went to meet her parents and oh my God, her mother is what I call the epitome of beauty. Immediately I saw her mom, I fell in love with her. It was love at first sight, like I could not resist it. I could feel my whole body yearning for her. My girlfriend father is late and the woman is single. So we exchanged greetings and she served me like her son-in-law to be. We got along pretty well because the way she was just gisting with me, like we've always known each other for years. I felt at home. So I kept on lusting after her. I couldn't even look at my own girlfriend anymore. All I wanted was that woman to be around me. So we were just sitting down and talking. And the mom told me that she would like to take a trip that we should discuss the date of our wedding so she will know when she can book her vacation. I told her that we are not rushing anything, that we would like to take our time and stay as fiancés for some time before we can start planning our marriage. She said no problem. And then she said that she wanted to go to the poolside and chill. 
and I told her that I wanted to go upstairs. And that's because I wanted to go upstairs and stay by the window to watch her swim in her swimming suit. This woman is so beautiful. She doesn't even look like a woman that has given birth to a 26-year-old girl. I was just watching her from the window when my fiancé walked in. And immediately she asked me what I was looking at. I tried to tell her that it's nothing. She went and peeped through the window and saw her mom swimming. She got upset that I was lusting after her mom. I was able to convince her that this is not what she's thinking, but now I find myself wanting her mother more than I ever wanted any woman in my life. Do you think I need to go see a therapist? Do you think I need prayers? Or do you think this woman has bewitched me? Or is it because the woman is my speck because I like older women? Guys, over to you people. What are your thoughts? What do you think this young man should do? Please try and be accommodating with your comments because these people are always in the comment section reading comments. Don't forget to share this video to at least five of your loved ones or your family members. And I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. Marriage is not an achievement. Honestly, I wish I lived my life the way I wanted before getting married. I wish I never got married early. In fact, I wish I was unmarried. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a girl, and she said, As a young girl, make sure you live your life to the fullest before you enter a man's house, all in the name of marriage. Marriage is not an achievement, but we are not ready for that topic. Honestly, I wish I lived my life the way I wanted before getting married. I wish I went to the law school I wanted to go to. I wish I took those trips with my girls. I wish I never got married early. In fact, I wish I was unmarried. Don't get me wrong, I love my husband and my children, but I feel like I am living my life for them and I don't have a life of my own. I got married at the age of 22 because then everybody just wanted to get married. It was like an achievement. It was as if if you are not married, you are a bad egg. It was like a competition. Who is the first person to get married after graduating school? Even though I only went to secondary school. Or maybe I was in the wrong circle of friends. Because the friends you keep says a lot about you. It's either they shape you or they break you. After I left secondary school, most of my classmates got married. And that was the only thing on my mind, was to get married, start a family, and pepper those people that was peppering me. Later, I found out that that was the most stupid thing for me to ever do. I should have furthered my education. I should have lived my life. Maybe my mother would have been proud of me. My father would have been proud of me. My siblings would have been proud of me. In fact, I would have been proud of myself but i rushed into marriage i see so many young girls of my age living their life living their life enjoying traveling and experiencing the world but there is me somewhere with three kids still struggling to feed myself and take care of them because my husband is not rich maybe if my husband was rich he would have funded all those things that i i want i wanted to travel to experience the world to view the world from a different view. I can't remember the last time I went to the salon because when will I do that? Is it when I wake up by 6 a.m. to get my kids ready for school? Or is it when I'm cooking lunch for them so that they will have something to eat when they come back from school? Or is it when I'm running back to pick them up from school? Or is it when I'm running to go to the market so I can get things and make something for my husband to eat when he comes back from work? There is no time for me. Even the little money I get from the little businesses that I do, I still invest them in my kids' well-being. My husband no longer looks at me the way he looked at me when we first got married. He hardly touches me and I can't remember the last time my husband even hugged me. I think he sees me as this woman that is in his house to take care of his children and warm his bed whenever he is in need of a warm woman. I know he's cheating on me, I have seen his messages, but I can't say anything. And I can't leave because how will I take care of three children all by myself? I am still a young girl, even though conditions made me look like I am over 60. 
but I'm just 35 and my husband is 40. I used to be fair, but now I am dark. And that's because I've been suffering and not taking care of myself. And I know one of the things that attracted my husband to me is my complexion. But now I've lost it because I am constantly under the sun with no proper skin care to maintain my skin. My husband carries any type of women he likes. In fact, he rubs it in my face because he knows I wouldn't do anything and I wouldn't leave. My mother warned me. She told me not to do it. She told me to take my time. She told me that what I am rushing into, that I will get tired of it. She told me to wait a little longer. She told me to pursue my dream. She told me to own my life, but I didn't listen to her. And that is one of the things I regret. So now I am stuck in this marriage of a thing. But I am putting out this story out there just for any young girl that is planning to get married early. I am not saying that it might not work for some people. But before you go into marriage, make sure you've lived your life. Because life after marriage is different. Don't be deceived by what you see online. Marriage is more, much more deeper than what you are being told or shown online. Nobody shows you the bad side online. They only show you what they want you to see. If as a girl you still have the mentality that you want to be in a man's house as a full housewife, please don't do that to yourself because you will regret it. Have your own money as a woman. Have your career as a woman. Build your empire because if you have your own money as a woman, no man will disrespect you. Even your husband will not disrespect you because they know and see that you can do without them. They will never disrespect you because they don't want to lose you. But when they see that you can't do without them, they will disrespect you. They will call you names. They will make you feel worthless. And at the end of the day, sometimes they might even leave you. And as a young girl, listen to your mother. Your mother is the best teacher life has given you because she went through that life before you were born. So she is experienced and everything she is telling you is out of experience. So young ladies, listen to your mother and live your life before you get married. No be as it be online, it be for real life. I keep on saying it that as a woman, have your own money. Live your own life. Forget about what you are seeing online. When you are ready for marriage, you get married. Don't rush into marriage because this person is getting married. This one is getting married. Go into marriage because you are ready and you love this person. And you know that this person is somebody that will love you forever. Do you live your life? When you are in your 20s, your 20s are when you are supposed to package your life together. Don't rush into something that you'll regret later. Because if you rush in, you will rush out. Like I always say, make the comment section accommodating. Please try and share this video to at least 5 of your family members or your loved ones. And I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. I just found out that my two children are not my own. In fact, the two children belong to the man my wife introduced to me as her cousin brother. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a man and he said, I just found out that my two children are not my own. In fact, the two children belong to the man my wife introduced to me as her cousin brother. All my life I've stayed in Canada. So three years ago, I came back to Nigeria because I wanted to look for a good woman to marry. So my friend advised me that if I'm looking for a God-fearing woman, that I should go to church and look out for a very beautiful sister and make her my wife. The first day I went to church, I took a notice of this girl that was glowing. The way she was dressed, the way she was composed, the way her hair was made. Everything about her was in check. And the way she was dancing when the priest was praising God. The way she was praying, the way she was praising. In fact, I was captivated by everything I saw. So I approached her then and we started talking. We started hanging out and we started going to midweek services. And we started going to choir rehearsals, even though I wasn't interested in all those things. But I had to do them because I wanted to stay close to her and get to know her more. So we started dating and I asked her to be my wife because you don't need a lifetime to tell a good woman is a good woman. 
She accepted to be my wife. We made everything fast. We did our wedding and I started processing her papers after I left Nigeria. I went back to Canada and she was happy when her papers came out. She came to meet me and that was the happiest day of my life. Mind you, before I left Nigeria to Canada, she was already three months pregnant. So when she got here, everything was easy. She had our first child and then the second one came. Mind you, there is this guy that my wife introduced to me that this guy is his cousin. And sometimes this guy comes to our house in Canada to stay because he also lives in Canada. Sometimes he comes to stay with me and my wife for like four days, sometimes a week. My last baby was sick and I needed to get my baby blood and unfortunately they said I wasn't a match. My wife wasn't a match too. I secretly run a DNA test on my babies and I just found out that they are not mine. So just out of suspicion, I said this is the only guy that I have seen around my wife. Let me just know if their DNA will match. And to my greatest surprise, I just found out that this man is the father of my kids. The man that my wife told me is her distant cousin is the father of my children. I confronted my wife. I told her how could she do this to me. And that's when she told me that she's sorry that the guy is actually her lover. That she only married me because she knows that I am going to be her ticket to Canada. That she took interest in me when I told her that I am based in Canada. Now my problem is I've been the father of these kids all their life thinking that they are mine. I know that they are still young and that I am still young too and I can marry another woman. But this is me telling young guys that meeting a lady in church does not guarantee that she is a good woman. It does not guarantee that she is the woman of your dreams or the woman that God has ordained for you. The ones that stand on the street are still the ones that wear good clothes and sit in the front role of church me and my wife have already started making plans to part ways i've already moved out of the house i told her she can stay in the house i am currently staying with my friend until i get myself an apartment but once the divorce is finalized everybody will go their separate ways because i don't want to keep reminding myself of what she did to me so this is my story please young guys be careful out there the worst mistake you can make in this life is marrying a bad woman <laughs> guys just like he said now those ones where they stand for street now them still they wear clothes they go sit down for church when you are looking for a good woman or a good man to marry pray to god to direct you everything is not all about church everything is not all about she's covering herself she wears the same clothes she goes to church she does this blah 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 it is not so guys what do you think about this story what are your thoughts and don't forget to share this video to at least five of your family members or your loved ones. And I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. The worst thing you can do is to take advice from your single friends. That's my friend that advised me to leave my husband. She's going out with my ex-husband. In fact, I think she's even pregnant for my ex-husband. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again. And this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to this story is from a woman and she said i've read this story i've read it normally i know they read story until i sit here and i read it but i read this one and if you are a young girl hmm, and you want to get married or you are planning to get married or you are a young girl that is in marriage open your ears and listen to this story it will help you. I am still in love with my ex-husband, but I don't know what, how to go about it. I want to use my story to advise young girls out there that are married, or they are about to get married, or they aspire to get married one day. The worst thing you can do is to take advice from your single friends. My husband was everything to me. He loved me. He adored me. He worshipped the ground I walked on. But he had only one problem, and that is, he is not romantic. My husband provides for me. If I ask my husband for 200k now, he will give it to me without even asking me what I want to use it for. But I'm this girl that loves flowers. I want when my husband comes back from the office, I want him to buy me chocolate. I want him to get me things. I want him to take me out on dates. 
but he was too busy for me. So I would always ask my friends, like, how is it in their marriage? My friends will lie to me that their husband takes them out, their husband buys them gifts, their husband surprises them with gifts on their birthdays. I found that is a lie. They buy those things themselves and post it to pepper us. So I felt my husband wasn't doing enough. So because of that, I applied for a job because I got bored at home. My husband was in support of it, so I started working and I started making huge money. So I no longer had respect for my husband. I will come home instead of going to the kitchen to cook. I will relax and buy takeaway. Knowing fully well that my husband doesn't eat takeaways, my husband only eats homemade food cooked by me. Each time my husband will complain, I will tell him that I just came back from work and he does not expect me to come back from work and go into the kitchen and cook for him. He reminded me that he never wanted me to work, that he can actually foot our bills comfortably without complaining. But somehow the money I was making got into my head and my friends also got into my head. They will tell me that it's better that I am single instead of coming home and meeting a nagging man. And these words came from my single friends because after I found out my married friends were lying to me about how their husbands were treating them, I decided to cut them off and then I made new friends. My friend told me that I have enough money to start up my life, to set up my life and to live the kind of life I wanted. I can travel the world that I don't even need my husband to do that anymore. She advised me to leave my husband, which I did, because after my husband kept on complaining and he couldn't take it anymore, he told me that he wanted us to go our separate ways. I agreed because I was even tired of the marriage. When I left my husband's house and I started living alone, that was when it dawned on me that this man has been the one even keeping us together. He has been the one taking care of me. He has been the one loving me. Just that he didn't love me the way I wanted to be loved. But that was okay because he loved me regardless. When I became single, that was when I found that there is nothing on these streets. Imagine leaving your husband just because he cannot get you the romantic things you want. And now you are out of marriage. You started over again, jumping from one person to another, looking for a perfect man. The most shocking part of this story is that... That's my friend that advised me to leave my husband. That is not the kind of man I need. Guess what? She is going out with my ex-husband. In fact, I think she's even pregnant for my ex-husband. I never knew she advised me to leave my ex-husband because she wanted to take my place. When I found out about this, I felt betrayed. I felt hurt and I tried to go back to my ex. But he doesn't want me anymore. In fact, he has moved on. He told me that we can never in this life come back together again. I don't know what to do and that's why I'm writing this story. So please, if you've ever been in my shoes, please, how did you do it? And if you are a married woman that is divorced and somehow you and your ex-husband got back together again, please, how did you do it? Because I really want to go back to this man. There is nothing in this street for me. The worst thing that will happen to you as a married person is taking advice from your single friends. And then the worst, worst thing that can happen to you as a woman is not having a mind of your own. And then comparing your home to another person. Because if she wasn't comparing this person and this person, she wouldn't be in this mess now. When you want to get into a relationship and you see that this man is not the romantic type, and you were dating him for years. You know that this man was not a romantic type. And then you got married and you entered the marriage. Now, because he's not doing those romantic things that he was not doing when you guys were dating, it became a problem. How? If you know that you want a romantic man, go for the ones that are romantic. There are ones that if they are coming back every day, they will buy you chocolate, they will buy you flour, they will buy you anything. Go for those ones if that's the kind of girl you want. Anyway, guys, please, what do you think this lady should do? What are your thoughts? Do you think you have any tips on how she can get back her ex-husband from her friend that told her to leave her husband and now she's pregnant for the same man she told you to leave? See, guys, what are your thoughts? Please remember to be accommodating with your comments. Share this video to at least five of your friends or your loved ones. And I will see you guys on my next episode.
Bye. I have been seeing ghosts and beings that I shouldn't see since I was a child. Before I knew what was happening, I started eating raw meat. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a guy and he said, I have been seeing ghosts and beings that I shouldn't see since I was a child. And that has tormented me my whole life. I keep telling my family, but they think I have mental issues. So it all started when I was a child. I was 10 years old when this happened. One day there was an argument while we were in class of who can do the most scary thing that other kids cannot do. Some wore costumes, some did a lot of things, but I decided to go extra mile to prove that I am the king. So I decided that at 2 a.m. I will go to my village stream and stay inside the water, chanting anything till morning. The day came and I did it. I was in the stream chanting one song I heard in a movie till morning. It was the palm wine tappers that saw me in the water around 4 a.m. that told my mother and other people. So when I told my classmates about it, everybody believed me. So I was feared and respected in my school. But exactly seven days after I did that, I will go to sleep. I will see myself in that water with some beings because I don't know if they look like human beings or not. Then from the dreams, I started seeing spirits that are hovering around people. Before I knew what was happening, I started eating raw meat, everything raw. I no longer cook my meals, but at some point it stopped. I started feeling like a normal human being again. So I have been looking for an answer to what might have happened to me that night, but I haven't gotten any. So please, if there is any spiritualist, please help me out in the comment section. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, he said he was a child when he did that. This life is deeper than we think. So please, if anybody here, you know that there is a way or you understand what he might be passing through or, when, or what went through, wrong with him that night or maybe something he entered him or something shall happen to him that night and you think you can explain it to him please if you cannot drop it in the comment section please take it to my instagram dm because my tiktok and my facebook the messages there is too much so take it to my instagram dms i will always check my dms whenever a story like this comes up so guys don't forget to massively share this video because somebody that might help this person might be on your timeline I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My wife gave birth seven months ago, yet her tummy looks like she is still nine months pregnant. Her tummy is hanging everywhere. Even a madman won't find her attractive. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again, and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a man, and he said... My wife is getting out of shape and it's becoming annoying. My wife gave birth seven months ago, yet her tummy looks like she is still nine months pregnant. I don't want anybody to come for me with the excuse that she just gave birth because my co-worker that gave birth four months ago is back in work and in shape. She is even better than she was before she got pregnant. All the food they asked my wife to avoid when she was pregnant so it makes it easy for her to snap back. She ate everything. After she gave birth, she started eating for five people with the excuse that she's breastfeeding. I don't know why women let themselves go after marriage and childbirth. My wife is triple her usual size and she doesn't care at all. Her tummy is hanging everywhere. Even a madman won't find her attractive. Yet she doesn't want to do something about it. She eats fufu by 12 a.m., pizza, burger, shawarma. As long as it is food, she will eat it. 
I've begged her, let's go to the gym, but she keeps saying she's tired. If she continues like this, she's going to be obese. How is an obese woman going to take care of my child or children? She keeps saying I am body shaming her, but I just want the best for her because I know she will be happy with herself if she loses weight. I even told her to start eating twice a day so it can help her lose weight, but she says she can't. She is breastfeeding and she needs enough food. I know that she is a breastfeeding mother, but eating six times a day is too much, especially if all she eats is fufu, rice and all. I have tried everything possible to help my wife get into shape, but she sees it and takes it the wrong way. All I want is for my wife to go back to a size 12 or even size 14, but this size 18 is too much and she's heading to a size 20. Please, do you have any other easy way for a woman to get in shape, if not for her to watch what she's eating? I am so in love with my wife, and I don't want to be with any other woman, and that is why I want her to go back into shape, so I can be attracted to her again. So please, I will be in the comment section. If you have any tips on what I can do to help her get into shape without cutting off food, Please help me. I'll be reading comments. <sighs> I don't think there is anything you would do for you to lose weight other than cutting down what you eat. It's actually 70% of what you eat and 30% to work out. So if you can control what goes into your mouth and your system, then you are going to lose weight. You will not even believe it. It worked for me and that's why I'm giving it as an advice. I was a size 16, but now I'm currently a size 12 heading to size 10. And what I did was I stopped eating sugar, carbonated drinks, soda and all that. And I started eating once or twice a day with portion control, small, very small something. I have one spoon, then I ate a lot of protein. I eat a lot of egg right now egg egg is a very very good source of protein so i eat a lot a lot of egg so if you can control what you eat eat enough protein move even if it's just work out for 20 minutes daily she's going to get in shape and it will only happen if she is willing because if she's not willing to do that no matter what you do she will not lose that weight. So guys, if you have any other tips that you think might help this young man, please drop it in the comment section. And don't forget to share this video to at least five of your loved ones. And I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My wife has body odor and she doesn't care. My wife hates bathing. Even on her period, she doesn't like to take her bath. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar and just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a man and he said, My wife has body odor and she doesn't care. My wife hates bathing, even on her period, she doesn't like to take her bath. Now she has transferred her dirtiness to my 9 months old baby because anytime I come home from work to carry my baby, I notice she has this awful odor coming from her body. My wife, before we got married, because we dated for a long time before getting married, she's a clean person or so I thought. Though before we got married, we never stayed together for a long time. She always comes to my house and goes home maybe after three days or four days. So I think I didn't take notice of it. Her body odor got worse after she gave birth to our baby. She will refuse to bathe, saying she is cold even with hot water. Her mother will force her into the bathroom to take her bath. So when her mother left, she didn't care about herself or our baby. My whole house is smelling because of her. I have a maid that takes care of the house. My house is always clean, but my wife's body odor smells everywhere in the house. My friends have noticed it and they stopped coming to my house because of the body odor my wife has. Because each time they come to the house, my wife will come and join us in the sitting room, making it impossible for anybody to breathe the good air. I have told her calmly so many times, but she doesn't care. Everything about my wife is smelling, her mouth, her hair, her body. And I am tired of talking to her. And no, she is not depressed. 
she is happy and she is well taken care of. The only thing I see is a woman who is lazy and not challenged with her body and well-being. I can't remember the last time I made love to my wife. In fact, since she gave birth, I haven't touched her. And that's because I can't go close to someone that smells worse than a pig. My wife is supposed to be my handbag, but how will I take somebody that is smelling to a business function or even dates? I called my mom-in-law to come and take her to her house for some time so I can breathe well in my house for at least one week. But her mother rejected her that she doesn't want her to come to her house so that her house will start smelling. Please, someone should help me with a solution because I am losing my mind. I don't know. I heard that sometimes it could be genetics or something. So maybe you should take her to the hospital to see the doctor or something. So guys, if you have any other suggestions on how you think he can help his wife and reduce her body odor or cure her body odor, please drop it in the comment section. And please remember to make the comment section accommodating for everyone because they will be reading comments. And don't forget to share this video to at least five of your loved ones. And I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My wife doesn't have a womb and I just found out. That's when she told me that she doesn't have a womb. That the last abortion she did for me almost took her life. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again and this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out the story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a man and he said, My wife doesn't have a womb. And I just found out. We have been married for four years. And for that four years, we have been wanting children. And my wife knew she will never conceive again. Yet she said nothing. So my friend advised us to go for fertility tests to know if we are both okay medically. Which I accepted to do. But somehow my wife thinks is a bad idea. Saying that if we go, that it means we do not believe in God. And I was like, God gave us doctors for a reason. She kept on dragging it until I told her that if she doesn't follow me to the doctors, that I will move out of our house and that will be the end of our marriage. That's when she told me that she doesn't have a womb, that the last abortion she did for me almost took her life, but it was her womb or her life. I told her I never knew she was pregnant. She said the day she found out she was pregnant that she asked me if she gets pregnant, if I am ready to be a father, that I told her no. And that made her abort the pregnancy. But God knows that I asked her that night if she was pregnant, but she said no. And if she said yes, there is no way in this life I won't take responsibility of my child. Now she's sounding like it is my fault. But I know it is not my fault at all. And no one is going to tell me nothing. I have told her I want a divorce because I need children. I am an only child and I need kids. So I can't be with a woman that can't give me kids because of the wrong choices she made. She's telling everybody that I'm wicked, that I put her in a situation and now I want to abandon her. But my mother said I am doing the right thing. Please, do you think I am doing the right thing? Audience, over to you guys. Um, not really feeling well, so I'm not going to say much. So over to you guys. Do you think he's doing the right thing by divorcing the wife that obviously aborted a pregnancy for him? But in this case, he's saying that he did not know that the woman was pregnant. That if he knew that he would obviously take responsibility of his child. So please try and be accommodating with your comments because these people are always in the comment section reading comments. And don't forget to share this video to at least five of your friends or your loved ones. And I will see you guys on my next episode. Bye. I got pregnant for my brother-in-law because my husband with my best friend. So as I was folding my clothes, I saw a message from DSTV saying... I can't wait to kiss you again. Ah. Hello guys, Sugar Plum here again. And this is Confess with Sugar. And just like I always do, I'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to. So this story is from a woman and she said, 
I got pregnant for my brother-in-law because my husband slept with my best friend. So let me start with how it all started. My best friend and my husband doesn't get along at all, even when we were just dating. And that, for some reasons, my best friend thinks that my husband is not good enough for me. But I didn't listen to her. I just followed my heart and I got married to my husband. At some point, my best friend needed a place to stay because she wasn't doing well financially. So I was like, since she doesn't get along with my husband, I can as well let her stay with us. At least I won't be worried about her doing anything with my husband. So I didn't know all this was an act they put up to distract me from noticing what was going on behind my back. So one day, my husband was trying to send a large file to his boss. So for his phone not to lock, he set it on never lock screen. He left his phone in the room and went into the bathroom. He usually takes his time because he uses the toilet and then he bathed. So the file delivered. So as I was folding my clothes, I saw a message from DSTV saying, I can't wait to kiss you again. Ah. So I opened the message and it has my best friend DP. I opened their messages. What I saw really broke me. I saw on his media videos of them going on dates together, even trips, because my husband travels a lot for business trip. Some of those trips, he would take her with her. I saw screenshots of big amounts of money that my husband sent to her. Then I saw the conversation that totally broke me. It was my husband that brought up the idea that she should tell me that she needs a place to stay so she can stay close to him. So that means that my husband was dating my best friend under my roof. So I took everything in and I moved on. So my husband brother stays in US. So he came to visit us here in Lagos. So my husband decided to ask him to stay with us instead of staying in a hotel when we have a big house. So he accepted to stay with us. This guy is cute and handsome. He walks out so he looks dashing. I shall like him and one day I went to his room and I stripped myself in front of him and he couldn't resist me. So that's how we continued. While my husband was doing his own with my best friend, I was doing my own with his brother. Now his brother is madly in love with me and he has told my husband that he wants to marry me. And I also accepted I want to marry him. Now my husband or soon to be ex-husband said i am evil do you think i am evil this is a case of do me i do you god or man no go vex so guys what do you think do you think this lady is evil do you think she took it too far or do you support what she did anyway please try and be accommodating in the comment section and i will see you guys on my next episode and don't forget to share this video to at least five of your friends or your loved ones or your family members or anybody share 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 the video <laughs> i will see you guys on my next episode bye i am in love with a madman hello guys sugar plum here again and this is confess with sugar and just like i always do i'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to so this story is from a girl and she said i am in love with a madman i know it sounds crazy but there is this madman in my street he is very handsome he has coily hair and his eyes are blue he doesn't eat from the dustbin. He is always clean. You can only tell that he is mad because of the weird faces that he makes every minute. I noticed he likes me because each time I pass my bus stop, I see him there. And immediately he sees me, he will start smiling. The one that happened recently, I came down from Keke and he was at my bus stop as usual. But this time he had a small flower that he might have plucked somewhere and he handed me the flower immediately I came down. People were staring at me, but I didn't care. I still collected the flower and gave him the Pepsi that I was holding. So each morning when I'm making my lunch that I will eat at work, I make for two and I put it inside takeaway. 
then I will give it to him when I come back from work because I don't see him there in the morning. But I always microwave the food after I close from work so it will be hot by the time I get to my bus stop. And I've started liking him. And my next move is seeing if I can take him off the street or see where he is coming from. Do you think it's love that I feel for him or pity? I'm not going to... I don't know if it's love, I don't know if it's pity, or I don't know if you're just being a kind human being that you are. But if you think you are falling in love with him, it's your heart. You alone know what you're feeling. So audience, what do you think this girl is feeling? Do you think the girl is feeling pity for the madman, or she's in love with the madman, or she's just being a nice person that she is? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Please remember to be respectful with your comments because these people are always in the comment section reading comments. And don't forget to share this to at least five of your loved ones or your family members. And I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye. My wife is a model and she doesn't want to get pregnant. It's been five years since we got married. She keeps telling me to wait that getting pregnant is going to destroy her body. I even said that we pay her two million monthly so she doesn't bother about working but she doesn't want to listen to me hello guys sugar plum here again and this is confess with sugar and just like i always do i'm going to read out this story for you guys to listen to so this story is from a man and he said my wife is a model and she doesn't want to get pregnant it's been five years since we got married. She keeps telling me to wait that getting pregnant is going to destroy her body. But I've been waiting for five years now. Yet she doesn't want to get pregnant and she doesn't even have my time. Every time she will be outside with her crew members going for shoots, neglecting our marriage. And each time I complain, she will tell me that this was how I met her. And I keep telling her that she can't be living the same way she was living her life when she was single, that she is married now and she has responsibilities. But she doesn't even listen to me. It's like pouring water on a stone. I love my wife and I've always wanted a slim girl with the type of body that models have. And when I met Trauma, I fell deeply in love with her. And with my money and class, I doubt if any woman can say no to me. So she agreed to be my girl. I love ambitious women and that's one of the things that attracted me to her. But I didn't think it will have a wrong impact on our marriage. Yes, I didn't want kids immediately after marriage because I wanted to enjoy my wife and marriage before kids start coming. Because believe it or not, kids are stressed. So we agreed to wait three years and even the three years I barely see my wife because she is always somewhere modeling i visited the topic about having kids after three years and she said she needs more time i said no problem two years down the line now she still doesn't want to reason with me she told me that pregnancy is going to ruin her body and that she isn't ready for that she even asked me to take a second wife if i can't wait for her anymore or we can use a surrogate mother but i don't want that i don't want to be with another woman or i don't want another woman to carry my children i have pleaded with my wife to just leave work and focus on us but she refused i even said that we pay her two million monthly so she doesn't bother about working but she doesn't want to listen to me so please how do i get her to get pregnant and focus on our marriage because if she doesn't buckle up real quick Divorce might be the end of it all. <sighs> Guys, over to you people. What do you think? What do you think this man should do? Or how do you think he should go about it so that the wife is going to agree to get pregnant and focus on their marriage and leave her modeling career for now, at least for at least for a year? And mind you, he said he wanted or he is offering to pay her two million monthly so that she doesn't bother about money or working until she is okay to go back to work don't forget to share this to at least five of your loved ones and i'll see you guys on my next episode bye